This is Tech Addicts. This week, what's it all about when it comes to USB universal stuff? Acer has a new tough tablet. Lenovo has a glass laptop. Will you buy an analog disc with music on it? Google hopes to kill the password, and Ted wants a play date. Hello and welcome to the Tech Alex podcast. Ich bin the host, Gareth, and uh, das ist der co-host, Ted. Je m'appelle Ted. Bonjour, one and all. Uh, un et un. What are we speaking in foreign languages for? I don't know. I'm just brushing up on my European languages, <laughs> given the way the election just went. There's a tire oh, of likelihood yeah. that I could be European fairly soon. That's really interesting, isn't it? But you don't want to be, do you? Well, I do and I don't. I like the idea of Europe. I love the idea of being able to go on holidays down there. And I, 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 I am starting to notice, obviously, the folks in England and, well, to a certain extent, Scotland, who are listening to this, that don't realise the impact of Brexit on Northern Ireland. We would have a better life and times if uh, if we were still back in the EU. So it maybe works that way. Yeah. But I still quite like having a British passport and that kind of thing. But I suppose I would be able to retain that and retain an Irish passport, and then I can get a Scottish passport if that ever becomes a thing. Yeah, they'll probably I just they'll, collect them all up. They'll probably phase it out in a bit. They'll, they'll put they'll set a date for fifty years time where it's going to be phased out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could do, could do. But uh, yeah, for those who don't know. Um, uh, Sinn Féin did quite well in the local elections here, so it looks like we're going to be getting a a new assembly with a different makeup, and there's all to play for. So it's a different time Northern mm-hmm. Ireland is moving into after 101 years of being the way that it was. Very interesting. And I've got to be positive about it. Yeah. Because I can't be negative. It's a fact that's going forward. It seems to the outsider, at the risk of getting political here, to the outsider, it seems very sensible to have uh, one big lump of land being one country. Um, I know it's much more complicated than that, but you know the British Empire going and nicking everyone's country all over the centuries is just you know look at all the Falkland things and the the whole kind of Canada thing and and the the empire just goes and nicks people's land and just expects to keep it. I, 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 yeah, don't start me on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Portugal instead. They, they, they've done it more. Yes, that's true. <laughs> they, Not just the British. <laughs> no, no. I, I do, I do get that. The Armada was there, and all that claptrap. Um, it was the Spanish, wasn't let, it? The, the, it was. Yeah, the, they, they, they're quite close to each other. Let's talk about the weather instead. <laughs> It'd be so much more simple if that big landmass was one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Did Spain <laughs> nick Portugal at some point then? No, I think it was. I think Portugal was there first. Oh, was it? I let's, don't know. Let's not. Let's just not. We'll get letters. And let's not mention Basque. Okay, that that just a whole powder cake. Just don't. Just don't. Or Ukraine. Yeah. No. 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 Um, okay. Well, we'll talk, talk about, about the weather. That's what no, people weather. are listening to us for. Look, we not because we're geography majors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the weather! I just—I just wanted to say that um, I looked at the um, map of weather today, and the um, the um, pollen count for this area is really high. And I detected that because I started sneezing earlier, and so I've got blocked sinuses. So if I start sneezing later, you'll understand why. Um, and it's very warm and muggy and horrible. How's it your way? It is. It's very warm and muggy as well, and I'm thinking that I did forget to open the window before I sat down. So at some point, you're going to hear me squeaking around and doing that. In fact, I could preempt it now whilst Ted uh, sings. Da, 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 da. Mr. Blue Sky's here today. Uh, Mr. Blue Sky's not here today, actually. It's a um, very cloudy sky, and actually that's better for me, because when the sun beats down, um, it makes it even hotter in my tin can. I hope you can not hear the lawnmower that's going on outside my window, dear listener. If you can, I do apologise, but there's not much I can do about it. Well, I suppose I could go out there and threaten him with a with a, um, a passport for, po- for Portugal or something. Are, are you not back yet? <laughs> I am, yes. Oh, it's just interesting to listen to you wobble <laughs> on. 
Anything else you want to throw no, in no, there? No, you carry on. No? We'll, get to, okay. we'll get to feedback, shall we? Matt Jones. <laughs> After much deliberation, I bit the bullet and bought an iPad Mini 6 with a view to trying to use it as my main phone, says Matt. I've succumbed to the fact that I'm going to be best off carrying a second device as a safety net, but we'll see how far I go with it. Actually, the update on that is that... Um, he gave up on the idea because he tried it, and the Mini 6, small as it was, was was just too big for him, so it didn't last very long. But on the back of that, um, I thought that I would discuss that with you, because there was, at one time, an HTC flyer, was it? The HTC flyer, mm, do you yeah. remember that? And I, I do. I've got a feeling that I tried this experiment back in the day at some point, and I thought, yeah, I could do this. This device has got a phone app, and yeah, okay, you you can't sensibly put it to the side of your head, but you can use it on speaker, and why couldn't it just be your phone? And I tried it, and I didn't last very long. Have you ever tried that? Uh, I, there was a... Lenovo did one, and I got to play with it for about three days before they demanded it back. Uh, uh, and it, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It was a... It's like a 6.7... No, a, a 7.4 inch... I think it was... What's it called? Oh, it's, uh, uh, they made two of them. They made a sequel they, again the next year, but they didn't ship them to the UK. But I got to play with the first one. It was announced at IFA a number of years ago, right. and it was pretty cool. Um, and it really just it, it combined small tablet and phone. Right. I think it was called the phone, P-H-O-N, or something like that. And in your three days, did you see any potential for, for doing stuff that way? No, I didn't actually call anyone from it because it wouldn't accept my SIM. <laughs> so it was just a tablet I got to play with that had functionality. Yes, fell at the first hurdle. Yes, yes. They ought to put... Um, uh, I've got a, a, My Nokia T20's got a SIM card slot in it, but you can't make any phone calls on it. I think it's a bit of a miss, really. It's a miss, I tell you. It is. It makes sense to be able to have that functionality in there just for anyone who happens to want to do it. And even if you're you're sitting and want to make a video call or something that you can't do via WhatsApp or whatever you happen to have installed on your tablet, you, you can rely on the cellular network to make a video call because they do support that. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, on the back of this whole conversation, we also started talking about Oppo, because Matt's another Oppo owner, like me, and like you used to be, and mm-hmm. Super Voic Charging, and the fact that the U, the, the U in the universal part of USB, i.e. U, is really not very universal at all. We, we went through this process of working this through, and I've got this... Um, I had the wrong cable. I got a 65 watt Super Voic charger and the wrong cable. And in the end, some kindly soul sent me what they thought was the proper one. And indeed it was. And I plugged this thing in and I couldn't believe how quickly it charged. It was like, with it, I, I purposely killed the phone down to zero um, to, 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 so it was the battery was dead. And I plugged it in and within half an hour, it was 100% just stunning and it's getting even better bigger but if the point of the whole thing is that if this is not universal the whole point of usb particularly usb c is that you can in an emergency you can plug it in or borrow someone's charger borrow someone's cable do something about it but obviously you can't you need to carry around a super voic charger and a super voic cable with you don't you yes no, I, I, I do agree, but are, are you saying that it, it didn't work at all, or it, it you only get, like, a, a trickle charge? Before No, before, before I got the proper cable, it charged at 10 watts, so it defaults to 10 watt charging. So it did work? It did work, yeah. You could, you you, could plug in any USB cable, and it would work. Yeah, yeah. Th- so that makes it universal, does it? So, But the point is that we're entering a, a, a sphere now where 120-watt charging, 150-watt charging is out there. But actually, what they should be telling you is that if you want to do that, you've got to carry this gear with you to make it happen. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that was my but th- that should be ex- accepted any time there is a change made whereby a manufacturer can't sell a proprietary device. So instead, they have to look for ways to be able to proprietize their device in some way. And this, in this case, it is getting a, a specific voltage of charger and a specific 
carry or carrier of that voltage in the cable and you can only get it from them to get the perfect amount you know um, pixel does it as well um you can't get their fast charging unless you buy their particular what is it the 30 watt charger um i, th- I think it is it's something like that right, um, okay and, and that's that's not exactly universal, but it still is universal in that you can plug it in anyway. You just don't get the benefits of the ones that they install. It's not like you can't plug anything in. Yeah, yeah, I, I do get that. But I think that um, in order... It, it, the, the days when we used to have to carry our cables r- around with us, I think, are just crap. It's like going back to a, having a digital camera in 2002 when you had to carry the charger take the battery out of the camera put it into the charger have the charger with you have proprietary blah 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 and i just think it's a bit rubbish it should be universal as universal not just like if you've got the right cable with you to get the met the best out of the system but yes i i understand the trickle charge argument but then what should a manufacturer do should they all produce 240 watt usb charging cables and and plugs for all of their devices. Which is a slinky uh, link to an item we were going to talk about later, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but, you know, it, it, they, they are, the, the goalposts are moving. So if you're picking up an older cable and plugging it into something that's new, it's not necessarily going to be able to do the new no. standard that oh, it's absolutely. bragging. But, but when you have one newly released then that should then be universal anyway i the point is the, the, the this this whole new um item we were going to talk about later which is relevant to what we're saying now is the usb type c cables with support for 240 watt power delivery are starting to show up and the the implication for miss for this with me is that no longer will we have like um, you know, a, a bedside radio or a or a, a DAB radio or a television or whatever it needs. Anything that needs 240 volts can also be powered, not by some proprietary charger that doesn't work with anything else except that blooming thing. Sony are good mm-hmm. at this. Sony, I've got... Um, DAB radios with, from Sony, and they just—they've all got their own proprietary chargers. So for goodness' sake, let's have USB-C. Let's make it universal. These 240 watt power delivery cables might actually move us a step closer to that. Do you think? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. It, it, it <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, they're going to be more expensive, and people aren't going to want to purchase the more expensive stuff. Straight up, what the, the, the what was the price of the one that you and Steve both recommended? Um, it was on special offer at sixty. The proper proper price was eighty. So that that's not going to be included in the box of phone. No, of course not. No, and neither is the cable that that kind of goes along with that. That you can end up spending about a hundred pounds to be able to get a hundred watt charging. So they're going to be charging premium. Uh, so you're going to have to go out and buy these. Whereas most people are just going to go. Why would I want to spend that much money? I'll I'll just grab this two amp charger here and and that USB one from Poundland and plug them in and away I go. And don't care about how long it takes. My point yeah. is that when you sell a when Oppo sell a phone, they should also say to the person, don't forget to get this sixty five watts. You have got to carry our gear with you in your pocket at all times. But do they have to do that as well with the Bluetooth? If they don't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the device, or even if they do, are they going to have to tell you beforehand of what device you need to have to be able to listen to sound on your phone? They do. They they say that USB come USB C delivers your audio, and so plug in a pair of USB C headphones. But Bluetooth is also available. Bluetooth also available here. Yeah, they said, they, but they, not all Bluetooth headphones uh, have AptiveX and all that kind of oh, stuff well, built yeah, into it. Absolutely. And so, how, are they going to have to list what you need to get for whenever you buy headphones? They should. They they do that in the nomenclature. <laughs> 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 all right well there's there's plenty to play for i think they're doing okay i'm quite happy with uh, the goalposts being moving and then for anyone who's informed to know what you need to buy okay. in order to achieve that newer hardware fair enough i'll stop whinging <laughs> all right um <laughs> Good. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of a whinge because I did something yesterday and it had annoyed me a wee bit. Not, not kind of annoyed me, but it just felt a bit kind of, ugh, why am I doing this? Um, I got an SSD from Western Digital and I installed it into my computer. It's a, another NVMe 2 terabytes M.2 
goes directly on the motherboard and I have two of them in there and it's very, very nice. Um, so I, I went on and I noticed whenever I was having a quick look at the manual because, you know, I got one with it. So I, I made a, a little look at it. it. It mentions that there is the Western Digital Dashboard and I thought, ooh. I wonder what that's like. I'll have a quick look at that because I have a couple of Western digital hard drives and I could have them all on a dashboard. That'd be kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, whenever I installed the dashboard, there was an, a message that came up and said there was a new firmware for your SSD. And I thought, wow, I've got ooh, lots of SSDs. Um, I've got one from Adata. I've got one from Kingston. I've got one from Toshiba, which is now owned by... Connex, connect, Connex. We'll be coming to that later on. Um, I've got one from Samsung, and I've got one from somewhere else that I can't remember because I can't remember what ones I've already listed, and, and one from Western Digital now. So I thought, <laughs> I wonder, do these all have firmware updates? So I went and downloaded all the clients to each and every one of them, and they all have different clients that do different things. But they all want to sit running in the background of your computer, monitoring your computer and, and, and doing stuff for you to make sure that your trim and your smart and all that kind of stuff are working on your hard disk or your SSD. Um, and so I thought, right, okay, I'm just going to open them all up because I've got these this many SSDs. And I had them all down there. There were seven of them running in the background. And uh, yeah, that, one of them had a firmware update. Um, the A data one, that was the other one, A data. Uh, they had a particularly good front end that looked at all my uh, SSDs and said, you have all of these. Um, do, would you want us to run some tests and see the speeds and things? So I thought, okay, well, let's have a look at that. And it, it was able to give me a, a little uh, odometer that said how healthy they were. They were all sitting at 100%. They were all very healthy and doing quite nicely. And it gave me the temperature readouts and all that. It's very nice. Then I went through Samsung, which which listed a couple of them not all of them uh the toshiba one didn't recognize the one that was in my computer at all which is a i suppose toshiba's got out of the game and now it's through this new company called Connex. Uh, maybe they just don't support legacy ones uh, the Kingston one didn't recognize anything at all, and uh, it said i didn't have any hard disks which is a bit <laughs> concerning um and and you know each of them had a a, a different set of skills that it could bring to understanding your computer i just thought wow if i want to update the firmware or keep checking for updates to the firmware i have to have all of these on my computer all of them so you're you're actually best off sticking loyally with one brand and then putting those in now the reason why i have the western digital one is because it's a it's an install drive essentially my samsung um main drive is, is a very fast one so I can just have a nice SSD which I can run all my programs and things off that can run at a nice speed it doesn't need to be particularly fast I want two terabytes over one terabyte so speed isn't as important but uh, to, to get the same with the Samsung I would have ended up paying almost twice as much to get two terabytes so to stay in the same ecosystem and only have one app updating the firmware of my hard disks would have cost me a huge amount more. So, yeah, I think we need some sort of universal firmware update thing going on. But I suppose you have that with all the components in your computer as well. You've all the driver updates and stuff that you have to do mm. across the whole board. So you've got to have all of this huge amount of software installed to keep everything up to date. And you, there's no way that you, they don't send you emails to say oh by the way you've got this you've registered this um you there is a new firmware for it or at least i don't know any company that does that maybe they do maybe some do but of all of these i've registered them all they're not telling me anything about whether or not i have uh, a firmware update because the uh, the idiot was the idiot i want i can't remember anyway but uh, yeah it's a it's a mess it really is a mess, and I'm just going to go through and uninstall all of these, and maybe when I'm feeling in the mood to do some updates, I'll go and find them again and uh, reinstall them. When I go to Windows Update, um, mm -hmm. there's usually the kind of you know Microsoft stuff sitting at the top, and then there's another button that says um, that you've also got other updates or something. And if you click on that, I thought that it would tell you about 
the other stuff you've got connected and say and it'll tell you which ones have got updates and which hasn't and you could do it through windows is that no not true i don't think so i think the for some uh well important systems and things like that like uh, your gpu or whatever it'll maybe get a basic driver or something so that you know your gpu doesn't start malfunctioning or something like that i'm, I'm not sure right. maybe the Maybe the listeners can let us know, but uh, right now I just think that SSDs are are really a wild west, right? And a, a, something that's quite worrying. Did you get your new SSD on that scheme from Western Digital that you normally use, the refurbished or whatever it is? No, no, this was a brand new one. I, I don't think I would do that with an SSD. Okay. I think with a spinning hard drive, yes, they can work with those. But right now, I think SSDs are too much of a wild west okay. to trust. Okay. Yeah, anything could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, moving speedily into the hardware, hardline for the har- hardware, because there's a huge amount in here. Uh, let's, uh, let's start at the top. Uh, first up is uh, the co-founder of Razer has sadly passed away, um, Robert Krakow. Um, Ted, he was the inventor of the gaming mice. Well, apparently he wasn't. Um, I, when you drill down to it, he was the starter of the company and with, with some other guy they started they kicked it off in 19, uh, uh, 1985 was it or 2005 I can't remember now whatever date it was no it was 2005 that's right um, yeah and he's yeah. he's kind of credited with having um, um, invented this first razor mouse but apparently it was actually someone else that did it but he did start the company and his he he um, made the um, the whole um, Environment available for the, the for the production of these, and then became a bit of a hero. I think um, as time went on, um, what was he called? Razor Man, wasn't it? It was his handle. I Razor think. guy. Razor guy. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, to be honest, I've never heard of him, but um, it sounds like he's uh, he he's been very influential in terms of all this kind of gaming Razor stuff. Yeah, yeah. He passed away at the age of eighty-one, which is. Mm. Um, whenever you look at some of the imagery and things like that from two thousand and two, he looks quite young. And yeah. then you think, wow, and eighty eighty one is that's twenty years ago that uh, some of these videos were made. Incredible, incredible. What's the name of the uh, high time What's to... the name of that mouse? I can't remember it now. Um, oh yeah, the boom slang. That's what it was all about. The first day of a gaming mouse, the boom slang. <laughs> right. And it was okay. Some, it was some um, professional gamer who was in cahoots with the with the deal to get that going called Fatality with um, a one instead of the I. Yeah. I, this is all news to me. I really didn't know the person. Yeah. Well, no, I suppose um, when it comes to gaming, there's all sorts of different uh, niches and things like that that would have been invented over the years. And uh, this this was a big one. It has to be said. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Put Razor on the map, I suppose. Very sad. Uh, next up is that EU has claimed that Apple is breaking competition law over its contactless payment system. Now, this is um, the fact that they are kind of locking out other uh, uh, businesses from using its uh, near-field communication system uh, connected to Apple Pay uh, to make it difficult for people to use mobile wallets on the go and everything really needs to go through Apple. Um, I, I, I don't believe this is an issue with Android. I think they're, uh, uh, Google allow other manufacturers yeah. or uh, services to use. But it has been noted that uh, some uh, some companies have decided not to pursue development of it because they cannot reach Apple customers. So it, it's, it's limiting business growth for particular businesses. Am I right about that? I think so. I, I got a bit confused with this story. I, I think that the bottom line is that the NFC used by everyone else is a universal NFC. And the NFC, um, inverted commas, that Apple use is their own locked up version. And so um, nobody is able to develop for it except Apple. And they force everyone to then use um, uh, their own stuff to, to move the money through their, their own system I, 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 it is very these whole kind of because on the other on the other hand of this I've, I've said this before so I won't dwell on it but on the other side of this I think that if you're going to have a capitalistic society then why should I, to some degree I, I 
disagree with the monopolies and mergers thing that, that goes on. If you make yeah. if you make a company and you you pour money into your own company and you make it successful, why should then someone down the line tell you how you can run it and what you should do and what you shouldn't do? If Apple want to lock it down to their customers, why shouldn't they be allowed to do that? I so, so I, I do get both sides of the story. I think if I understand it properly, but I have mixed feelings. Yeah, well, it basically boils down to Apple are disadvantaging their rivals by taking a 30% fee of every purchase. And uh, the likes of, say, uh, Spotify, where they're possibly selling a, a subscription through the app, uh, Apple will want 30% of that. It, that so they're, they're making their payment. Isn't that a different issue, though, or is that the same issue? Well, I think it all boils down to the same thing, that Apple just want their 30%. Uh, um, if, if you're making a payment in a shop, you know, it, it, does this qualify for the thirty percent if you tap to pay uh, using the NFC chip that's in there? Does Apple want thirty percent no, of they can't the? But, well, because every payment has has a fee attached to it. You know, if if you're sending money, um, your bank get ch- gets charged a certain amount to send that money. I think that's sometimes why. I'm going on theories here. That's sometimes why a payment can take up to five days to credit to your account because they can use a slower, cheaper method of sending it. So it depends on your bank. Um, another bank that maybe... I, I do remember the government having figures that whenever they were paying people who were on benefits, if they made a, pay, a payment on the same day, you know, if, if, you, if you didn't get your, your job seekers allowance, but it was supposed to be paid in, they could do like a fast payment and it cost something like seven pounds to the taxpayer yeah. um, to, to get that payment credited into the account on the day. Whereas if it was a three day wait, it would cost something like one pound thirty. Uh, so, you know, that that charge is made and uh, the, the bank has to pay that to someone. And uh, I think Apple are looking for thirty percent of that charge by tapping to pay or of, something of like the that. charge, not of the purchase. No, no, no of, yeah, of yeah. the charge yeah. that the the bank is is raising, okay. or has raised against them, or whatever. I don't know. Again, <laughs> maybe our listeners can inform yeah. us because we're morons. Or at least I am. <laughs> no, yeah. me too. Uh, something that we can talk about with uh, with authority Sorry. is uh, is <laughs> stupid gaming devices. <laughs> uh, Ted, you put this in the show notes, and I have to say that I <laughs> I I don't know if I like this or not, and I might be a bit harsh depending on what you tell me about it from what you've gleaned because I've watched the video and I'm. I'm not sold on this. Uh, it's called the Play Date, and you can visit them at play dot date. That, that, that's it. That's their that's their web address, and it's a small gaming device that uh, costs one hundred and seventy nine dollars. That you receive games via Wi Fi. You can't buy games. You just get twenty four free games sent to you uh, over two a day or two a week for twelve weeks, and you play them. It has a unique control method in that there are two buttons, B and A, a D-pad, and a hand crank on the side <laughs> for fast-forwarding and rewinding the game, Yay! I think. Not for charging up the battery, which I thought initially, and yeah. that's why I got a bit excited about it. So did I. Um, is, is there anything else you can tell me about this, or does this seem like a, a fad that's going to last for the length of our conversation? <laughs> uh, what I like about this is, unlike when I'm talking to you about gaming, who's got this kind of background knowledge of all these games that you went through in the in the, the 80s and 90s, and me with this, the, you know, the same thing but on a different planet, um, this is all new. <laughs> All these games have been written from the ground up. So if you buy one of these, all these games are new ones. You're in at the start. You can play them or not play them, like them or not like them. But you're (laughs) in at the beginning and not kind of hanging on to someone that's been playing the same thing for the last 30 years. And I just like the whole freshness of it. The screen looks really good fun. It's good. It's, it seems to be an uh, um, an LC, a, a mono LCD, which means the battery will last forever. Um, and you don't need to crank, handle, wind it anyway. <laughs> um, 
and it just looks like really good fun and something different. I, I do admit that it does look a bit pricey, and I'm not sure what happens after the 12 weeks is up, whether developers are going to get on board to make newer games or whatever, or in fact mm-hmm. by then it's going to fall apart, as you say, and, um, and, and not happen. But there are um, developer tools available as well, so there must be... There must be some sort of, you know, way forward. I, I really like the idea of this. I love little gaming machines like this, simple ones, simple stuff, not complicated stuff like Stadia offers us. Um, and I, uh, do you know, I'd, I'd be, if this was actually available to buy and not backing some blooming, you know, risky Kickstarter thingy, then I, I would be really in for this. I like the idea of it. Sorry to disappoint you. No, you're okay. You're allowed your own opinion from time to time. Um, <laughs> it, it has a, a black and white screen, so it, it does. Um, it, it harks back to the likes of the Game Boy and things, so mm. it has that sort of unique charm to it. Uh, there's four gigabytes of flash storage in there, which I would like to think that there's some sort of shop or game front that, uh, that you can go in and get the developer games. Um, it's got a 168 megahertz Cortex M7 chipset on there, uh, with 16 megabytes of RAM. So it's not exactly the speediest machine under the sun. It doesn't need to be though. <laughs> it's got a, a one-bit display of 400 by 240, uh, which is the the black and white one. So again, it, it's not. It'll it'll rely on creative brilliance whenever it comes to the art that you see on the screen, you can, which you can also, we can all appreciate. You can also plug it into this kind of bedside block-looking thingy as well, and there's, yeah. there's a cover for it. I, I really like this whole thing. Pre-order for $179. <laughs> Let's see if they give it to me in British money. No, they don't. Um, $199 for the cover with it. Um no, it looks like it's America only, probably. But but it's not going to be shipped till 2023 anyway. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Well, it also has a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network on there and Bluetooth. Uh, there's a built-in mono stereo oh, with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It has a condenser microphone, too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's going to be a wee bit of sort of online play, oh, yeah. which I can only hope for. But... The, it's the crank, I think, that's the unique control method that might be selling it to people. Where you, <laughs> in, if you're playing Super Mario um, and you jump to your death, you can use the crank to wind it back a couple of seconds and then make the jump again. That's very uh, funny. Which could be nice, but I really wish that that had have been instead of a battery so ted doesn't have to plug it into a usb type c to charge it and complain that he's not getting 240 watts i didn't realize it was on wi-fi i I thought it was kind of really standalone but they're obviously they've got greater ambitions for it haven't they well they have to deliver the games to you somehow and that's via wi-fi yeah yeah i suppose so they're not going to send a, a shareware disc are they (laughs) <laughs> well, Evercade are sort of doing a similar thing at the moment where they're delivering a new game to your Evercade VS, which I've forgotten entirely to go and get, um, every month for the next six months. And then at the end of that, they're going to be releasing all of those. Or you, The game disappears after a month and it's replaced with a different one. Right. So you get to kind of trial the game for a month. And then they're going to release the cartridge of all the games that were downloaded um, at the end of the six months, I think. Right. Uh, so it, 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 it does seem to be a, a kind of a, a strange way. Maybe they're going to add packages where you can subscribe to certain packages yeah. and have them delivered to you uh, d- just to see what the uptake is, keeping things open. Mm. Uh, and developers can go in there and, and put stuff together. So you could get uh, a gaming house putting together you know, six games and then they can be delivered in a particular package if you like that developer over the over six months. I found oh, I, I think that the biggest attraction for me, as I say, is getting in at the ground at the beginning, and mm. and learning the games with everyone else out there, and not having some huge backlog that everyone else does really well, and it's all very complicated for the new user. I like this. I'm going to buy one. I've decided. Oh yeah! Oh, wow. Okay. Are you going to get the little case as well and the Wii TV type I'm thing? Not, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to get it on pre-order though. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't trust these people wasting $179. I'll wait till it's actually on sale. 
<laughs> oh, right, okay. Whenever it's in Argos and you can go down Exactly. I see. Well, one thing that I, I can guarantee you probably won't be buying is the, uh, let's go with uh, Melee. Mm-hmm. Melee Quieter 3 Windows PC, Windows Mini PC. Why not? Ha- um, which, uh, oh, what's his name? ETA Prime had a look at on YouTube quite recently. You would want one of these? Well, I like the the, the attraction for me, like the play date, um, p- partly is the size, because it's for my situation um, having a, a whole PC, a, a, a fanless silent PC at that, to put in my pocket, my front jeans pocket, and and go between my bases that I have to go between, and not have to worry about um, having laptops and computers here, there, and everywhere. Um, for me personally, this has worked really well. Uh, but up to now, I did try that once, as you know, with the B-Link thingy, which is great. But it's it's not pocket, it's not pocketable. It's bag carry, but not certainly not pocket. Um, and also, it's it was noisy. You remember you and I testing it? We we were trying to podcast, mm-hmm. and it was making this dreadful noise, and I couldn't do that. So this, I pricked up my ears with this one because of those factors, really tiny weenie still pretty well specified although i'm not sure about the chipset um and um and completely pocketable and not and not noisy well i'm just i'm looking for a price because i would like to expect this to be very low in price uh you you mentioned about the chipset there the the celeron jasper lake quad core processor which isn't particularly fast right um and it has single channel um, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is going to slow things down a good deal more. And you can't change uh, that. But that. That's not upgradable. No. The only thing that's upgradable is the SSD, and it will take up to four terabytes. Well, yes, that's where I want to come to this. Right. Um, the, the it has built in EMMC, which is either two hundred fifty six or one hundred twenty eight gigabytes, but you can put in an NVMe SSD up to four terabytes. Yeah. And this is fanless, um, so it'll it'll probably melt oh, I under. See. Right. Okay. <laughs> it'll heat up your van right. extraordinarily, depending on what uh, you're doing with it. Well, kind of, yeah. You'd you'd need a mother of a heat sink on there, I'd I'd, I'd reckon, um, which it might not allow for given the size of it. Which Unless you cut oh, a hole okay, in it, you spoiled my party, haven't you? <laughs> well, that, that's not to say. I, but I, I think that you would end up becoming somewhat infuriated because there's got to be certain throttling that goes on there to to slow this down so it doesn't heat up too much without a fan. Right. Okay. Well, Even a I, small fan. I like the idea. For me personally, that would have worked really well. But you're right. If if you've got to give up on performance and keep it in the fridge to make it work, then that's not much good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> very true yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, prove me wrong folks um if, if you want um i i do think this will get a wee bit too hot but uh let me know what you think possibly uh over there in australia they are getting why didn't that open uh they are getting the nokia g21 ted which is something that i thought you would have brought to the show beforehand but you haven't um, are you aware of this one coming out? Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm just to get a bit fed up with the whole Nokia lower end devices. To be honest, because they're, they're not very well specified. They're still sticking to um, sometimes base um, sixty four gigabytes. Um, you've also put um, in the show notes the C twenty one plus, which is, mm-hmm. it's got three gigabytes of um, sorry thirty two gigabytes of storage and hardly any RAM, and it's running Android um, 10 Go, or 11 Go, um, which is it makes it even more bottom-end. I know that Nokia are claiming to be really successful with their lower-end devices, and fine, good for them, but this is all they focus on, and the closest thing we've got to anything decent is my XR20, um, which is, you know, it's still not really flagship compared to other manufacturers. It's very, very good, but it's nothing like these. And so uh, it just seems like Nokia keep churning out, a bit like Motorola really, churning out device after device after device, and they're all not very exciting. But obviously you think they are. 
<laughs> Not really. Um, I, I have a theory, but I'll get to that in a second. Right, so the, the Nokia G21 has a, a fairly basic uh, Unisoc T606 uh, chipset on there with 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is a bit low for, I think it's about a $500 that they're going to be selling it in Australia, which works out to be a certain amount of pounds. Um, there's 128 gigabytes of storage. It's got a triple camera setup, a 50 megapixel sensor, two megapixel macro camera, and a two megapixel depth sensor as well. Um, so it, it 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 doesn't look too bad. There's a 6.1 inch LCD display uh, with HD plus resolution and a single meg, uh, 13 megapixel camera on the rear, eight megapixel notch camera, and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Did we not say there was 128 earlier? 720p. 720p cam no, or screen the screen is 720p yeah it, it, it's not the worst phone in the world but it, it's it's certainly a, a lower end cheap device that um that i think that there is a large uh market out there of of folks who don't who who just need a phone yeah they don't yeah, yeah care definitely. and they, they walk in there i know nokia and that's 100 pounds that's 200 pounds that one's marginally better but i know where i'm going with nokia yeah. so that's why they're doing so well with these budget phones yeah. whereas the higher end ones they can't do well with so they're you know they they're trying to climb uh but but failing because uh the the likes of samsung and apple have them trounced when it comes to the the upper end of the market but once that generation and i'm thinking it's maybe an older generation um stop being interested in phones and, and just move on uh that that nokia of old and uh, well it, it, as a brand will will probably perish what do you think i hope not um because i love the name of nokia the the um the screen size i think you said was 6.1 but um, uh, gsm arena is is, is reporting at 6.5 inches so oh, no, that's a, the c21 uh, i'm talking about the g21 is 6.2 Oh, 6.5. Yeah. yeah, maybe I just misread that. So it's a that. bit yeah. bigger um, than, than I thought. The Unis- To be fair, the Unisoc T606, which is the same chipset that's in the, the T20 tablet that I mentioned earlier, is okay. It runs fine. In, in fact, to some degree, it works better than the um, Snapdragon 480, in my experience, on the, the XR20. So the chipset probably is all right. You can also mm. um, buy the G21 in a 128 gig six gig variant if it ever came to the uk um and it's all it's also got a really nice big battery over 5000 milliamp hours of battery and it's 149 quid apparently according to gsm arena um and i'll just click through to that and check that yeah that's in um uh, um that's no i'm not sure where they're getting that price from but anyway um the you're right. I think it's it's okay. It's all right. If you're in the market for a cheapish phone, which is going to be stock Android, pretty much, mm-hmm. with very little on top, um, you know, Nokia is the way to go, I guess. But not that C, yeah. not the C21 Plus. Come on. <laughs> no, no. Um, but I, again, that is, that's just something. It's £99 on the shelf. Uh, Mary from next door might go down to the... The, the shop and, and pick herself up one of these because she wants to be in the, the smartphone world with a wee camera and be able to pick receive pictures of her her grandchildren and that is is what i think nokia really is cleaning up it's it's not for the kids to play call of duty on that's what oppo and things are, are managing to get but uh, i think yeah you've, you've got that brand recognition and that's that's where they're making their their only impact but Android Go is is I mean even Go- even Google are starting to not support Android Go now. Yeah. They reckon that YouTube doesn't need a client, so they've ditched that. And if you want to use an Android Go device with YouTube, you've got to just use it in the browser. It, it just doesn't seem to be any any forward motion on Android Go anymore. I don't know. No, no. But it, well, it still exists, so Nokia are okay to use it. Um, it, they've obviously got a, yeah. a road map with planned devices and it's not that easy for them just to tear those up mm-hmm. uh, because already R&D have gone into getting those devices um, onto that road map yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, there, there must be some market for it somewhere and uh, it's just easier for people to pick up a cheap device uh, with no frills everything uh, has its place it does indeed, much like Marshall 
Um, and it always has a place in your heart. Oh, yeah. This, this is the new two, the two new speakers. Well, one's an update. The Emberton, which I just so always wanted to buy, but I just couldn't justify it because I've got so many Bluetooth speakers. <laughs> but the Emberton looked lovely. The, the Emberton 2 has now been released, which is pretty much um, similar to the first one. But better battery, um, better water, waterproofing, um, um, etc. So um, that's good. But I think the news here is the Willen, W-I-L-L-E-N, I'm assuming that's a place somewhere, um, because most of these tend to be, don't they? Um, and it's a, 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 a kind of um, what, what is it? J, um, JBC, J, uh, JBC, JLC, J, I can't get it out. J, what's the what's the phrase? <laughs> Keep it in then. J, um, it's a, it's a lake near Milton Keynes, by the way. <laughs> oh, is it right? Good. <laughs> um, the the go. Who make? Who is it that makes the go? My my brain's gone dead. JLC, no. Android. <laughs> Google. Uh, anyway, this is a ding. JBL. JBL. <laughs> um, J- this is a, a challenger to that kind of market of little pocketable, square, dinky little devices. And the difference with this one, as far as I'm concerned, is that most of those pocketable, square, dinky little devices have about five hours of battery, whereas the. Um, the Willen is claiming 15 hours of battery, which is stonkingly good, I think. Um, and that is worth looking for it um, alone. $120 um, for the little one, the, tin, the tiny one, which which looks like a, at the same price as the... Um, pretty much as the Emberton is at the moment. But the Emberton 2 is going to be hiked up to 170 quid. I'm not sure if the Emberton 2 is worth the money, to be honest, but the little new dinky um, uh, Willen, I think, is really cute. Don't you fancy one? Look at the size of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. On the speaker, uh, there's a new play park with a big slide <laughs> at uh, Willen Lake Play Park. <laughs> Uh, pay attention. This is a, a podcast we're supposed to be doing. True, true, yes. Um, no, it, it looks very nice and small and dinky. It'll be far too overpriced for the kids to pick up, but um, yeah. maybe Ted might. I, I, I would be tempted. I'd be more tempted to buy the Willen than I would the Emberton, but I really mustn't because, uh, as I say, I've just got too many. The only, the only reason I want to buy it is because it's martial and it looks lovely and it feels lovely and, and it sounds lovely. Um but that's not enough. Oh, it's in two colours as well, actually. It's yeah. cream and black. Oh, it does look nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we don't know the prices of these in, in pounds. Uh, we have dollar prices, yeah. but uh, being a, a British brand, you'd like to think that they would have pounds on there. Yeah. Uh, well, that's $120 for the willing. Yeah, that's what I said. Do try and keep up. Oh, right. Um, sorry, sorry. I was the... staring at someone's slide. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the um, I guess that the the dollars is because it's a, an American website that we're linking to. Um, if we go to Marshall, oh actually I don't know if Marshall Marshall um, headphones it's called, isn't it? Marshallheadphones.com I think it's called. Marshallheadphones.com. It's right. There's a button on the website um, that you can just. Oh, it's right. Click on. Marshall headphones. <laughs> Accept all cookies. Right here we go. But you probably can't buy it yet. Portable just got louder. Yeah. There's the will in there. New. Discover the lineup. Come on then. Let's see. Eighty nine pounds. Oh, is that eighty nine? Wow. Yeah. Good job you're here, really, isn't it? Uh, they've, they've got a, quite a troop of attractive people advertising it. Yeah. That. Um, let's see if you can order one. Not that I'm going to. No, I mustn't. Oh, notify actually, me quite, as opposed to. Yeah. I do quite like the. Um, I do quite like the. Um, the, the cream one actually they do um, they do um, do quite a few of their devices in that cream colour I'm going to put my email address in here because you know I, <laughs> I thought you were already there I thought, I, I thought actually I, I think I've already done this but I'll do it again I anyway. thought Marshall's first stop was always Ted Salmon on their, yeah. their route to new devices <laughs> sorry we've, we've dwelt too long on that one <laughs> we have. Uh, while we're while you're doing that, um, I'm going to ask you uh, whether or not uh, a new analog disc uh, is going to allow me to either play vinyls in my CD player or play CDs on my vinyl player because there's a new thing coming along. And I had a quick read it and got c- quite confused. So did I. 
but it was interesting. Oh. And, I, and, and, <laughs> and in answer to your question, I think the answer is neither. Because oh. this, this whole thing, uh, this guy called um, uh, T. Bone Burnett has produced this new, or developed this new um, medium for, um, for, for, for music, which he's calling um, Iconic Originals. And um, he reckons that the technology transcends the sound quality of, <coughs> of CDs and vinyl. Um, and it's a completely new thing. And in order to play this stuff, you will have to buy new hardware. Um, there's no guarantee that it's going to go anywhere. Um, but he reckons, and it's only him that's claiming this, that this is a new, completely new thing. Um, it does kind of rely on people wanting to start collecting physical media again. I know that you do, but most people don't. And... Um, uh, well, apparently he's got Bob Dylan on board. So Bob Dylan has re-recorded some of his classic material um, to emerge as the, the kind of debut disc. But, I mean, mm. who knows where this is going to go? It could go nowhere, couldn't it? It's a nice idea that there's something new out there. But, yes, you would definitely need new hardware to play it, um, which means that it's probably going to go nowhere, um, except in very, very niche circles of audio files that are, are sold on the idea. And for T Bone Burnett to convince them that at what he's claiming about this um, vinyl PVC polyvinyl chloride mix of CD is actually special. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose whenever you look at the amount of money that uh, audiophiles are happy to pay, or well, it's begrudgingly happy to pay, uh, for the, the the hardware that they have, um, it, it's quite easy for anyone to understand why someone might want a piece of that action. It'll be interesting to see whether or not those audiophiles agree that this is notably better. Yeah. And it would have to be notably better, and not... Uh, it's. it's yeah, it's a wee bit better. Yeah, I, I, t- I, I'm not sure. The, the, the whole basis of it is... Um, it seems to be also about producing masters, um, master recordings and engineering um, expertise and stuff like that. And you wonder if, actually, even T-Bone Burnett is not very confident that it's going to go anywhere in terms of consumer um, uptake but I don't know, it was just an interesting little story I picked up in the week No it is, and I, I would get excited by this idea, I, I do obviously, I, being a, a a collector of physical media I, I, I put an awful lot of stock into having something and it opens up so many doors for art and things like that and and, uh, and inclusive extras and all those sorts of things to get you to rebuy something that you may have already have and and are are clinging on to uh, for dear life having something re-released as long as it's not doing what say Paul McCartney went and did with the Beatles where they've gone and remastered it and it's not the same song as you heard you know 30 years ago on a cassette player in a car one day (laughs) your dad played Hey Jude and and it didn't have a screeching guitar solo in the middle of it that Paul McCartney thinks is a great idea to put in there and now you can't, for the love of God, find that original version that you want to hear without going back to the original media that you had mm-hmm. it on originally. Um, so it, it'll be interesting going forward as to whether or not it is going to be properly... You know, Bob Dylan has re-recorded some of his classic material, so it's not going to sound the same as what it did on the original. That, that, that bothers me a wee bit. It's not remastering, it's re-recording. Yeah, starting again. A bit like yeah. a bit like the play date machine, you know. Start again. Let's start again <laughs> with something completely new, and this is going to be a really niche product. And Bob Dylan is on board. Maybe we'll get um, Jeremiah on board, and uh, his six other people that are signed up. It's a bit like this um, Sony three six zero three sixty audio thing, isn't it? But it's just that they started completely afresh with that, having to remaster everything, all the music in the whole world that's ever been made and they've got to just start again and, and recode it all to work with the system. It's a it's yeah. a big task, isn't it? It is, and you'll have to pay for the privilege. Indeed. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, well, I suppose, uh, you know, Paul McCartney, I'm sure, will jump on board. He's always happy to get in there and earn him some money. Yeah. Old Maka. <sighs> right, okay. <laughs> Before I get annoyed about that anymore, uh, Razer has is going to be bringing out uh, the Blade 15, uh, which is a new laptop that has a 240 hertz OLED screen and a 12th gen Intel i9 CPU in there too. It's a gorgeous looking machine. Um, it has uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR5. Um, it's got one terabyte of SSD. There's also an extra M.2 slot for you to add more, as you will probably need it want to, to set up your Steam library for on the go. Um, Ted, this is bonkers crazy. The, 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 the thing that jumped out at me and made me realise um, that I didn't know anything much about laptops was that this is the first, the world's first 240 hertz OLED screen. And I thought to myself mm. that when I buy a phone or get a phone in for review or anything, the first thing I look at is, is it AMOLED or is it LCD? But I, I became aware of the fact that the last laptops I bought and monitors and all sorts of that, it's just not something I think of. Um, laying aside the 240 hertz, yeah. I'm looking at my Acer laptop in front of me, the Nitro 5, and there's a sticker on it that says... 120 hertz and apparently i thought that that was supposed to be pretty good um the refresh rate on that and the uh, i'm I'm assuming i I never even considered what the screen was and i'm assuming it's probably an lcd well i think it must be and not an oled but it's it it was funny really that it was just not something i considered I, i remember a few years ago a good few years ago um Apple started, I think it was Apple that started producing laptops with OLED screens um, and they were um, LED instead of LCD and everyone was whamming about them and I kind of, since then, it seemed to have gone away. I don't know. Do do you think about that? Apart from the 240 hertz, is that something that you would be top of your tick list when looking for a new screen or computer? It has been. I, I did delve into that whenever I was looking for a new TV a couple of years ago. Um, and now that I'm looking for a new screen to go on my computer, I'm kind of delving back into it a wee bit, but more from the point of view of IPS, VA and TN side of things. Um, I don't think that technology quite enters into it whenever I am selecting it. I, as long as I get a nice IPS with a uh, a faster response time, then I would be happy. Um yeah, the 144 hertz and then 240 hertz obviously make a big difference, but I don't, I don't know that I would pay anything extra. I, I just know that 240 hertz will just be too much for my wallet right now. But but what about the OLED v um, LCD though? Do, would you do you think that you on a phone? We both of us know um, the benef- mm-hmm. the benefits of having an OLED screen over an LCD. Um, where the individual pixels are lit from the back, each each one of them, you get blacker blacks on everything. But yeah. as I say, I mean, w- would that be when you go off to buy your monitor? W- would you you wouldn't be considering that? No, I don't think I would. Yeah. If if I if I got wind that a particular IPS technology or an IPS screen was really good, I, I I don't think I would care whether it's LCD or OLED. Right, you're the same as me then. Um, but obviously there are people that uh, want to do this because Razer mm. are bringing out this three and a half thousand pound um, laptop, <laughs> which presumably, I mean, to be fair, it has got top of the range specs as you highlighted just now. But um, yeah, wow. Well, when I was doing TVs with Panasonic, I do remember they they how they clung to plasma for so long yeah. after plasma left behind. They they didn't look at LCD that much, and I think they moved pretty much straight over to OLED after they were done with plasma. Right. You know they they skipped that whole technology move because I don't think they rated it terribly highly. Yeah. So uh, OLED must be the thing. Maybe they did LED TVs for a while and then moved to OLED. I can't remember it was again years ago um but uh yeah yeah they 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 skipped particular technologies because they just thought no plasma's still better (laughs) you just reminded me of the day that we got the 
big gas plasma screen in and we were all wowing because we come from this CRT TV which was like about two foot out the back and then suddenly it was yeah. like three inches wide fat and it could just sit in the corner and we were just wowed by that I completely forgot about that stage and now <laughs> screens are like the thickness of the, the, the panel and that's a lot <laughs> oh wow yeah yeah yeah. Wow. And it feels like you could actually peel them off the, the plastic that they're stuck yeah, to. Yeah. Or the glass that they're stuck to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good days. Uh, uh, so, uh, moving on with in, well new tech uh, is the Samsung Pro Endurance. Uh, this is a new type of micro SD card uh, that Samsung have released that says it can write for 16 years straight. <laughs> The, the, the story behind this is it will suit people like you who have got security cameras and stuff and need to continually record on a loop. So particularly in commerce, they're aiming this at, which is to do with you know shops and premises and people that have got security systems and just stuff that needs to be written and rewritten to constantly and endlessly. And um, that's where they're targeting this. They're saying that the speed of the thing is not their priority in the process. It's all about the endurance. And yeah, they've they've t- they reckon they've tested it for sixteen years straight. Well, uh, they must have done that over the last sixteen years, mustn't they? <laughs> yeah. How do you, how do you test something for sixteen years when it didn't exist sixteen years ago? It's bonkers. And then what happens? You know, in, in four years' time, if you buy one of these in four years' time and it dies. And you go back to Samsung and they go, oh, you're out of warranty. <laughs> yes. Perhaps, they get, perhaps they're giving a 16-year warranty. <laughs> but even then, they're just going to send you a new one and say, oh, sorry, something must have happened there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I did think about you and your cameras out. Because you're the one that's always saying um, that you need SD cards for your cameras and, and other gear mm-hmm. around the house. And, and I guess something that you could rely on for um, loop recording would be useful but certainly more commercial use i I guess yeah yeah well um, i think uh, sd cards are getting slightly better i've only had a couple of failures over the years um and i have (laughs) just touching some wood there uh i haven't had a failure in a good long while although now i think about it that's because i've taken out the cloud subscription for the year because i I know to wait until black friday and do that then which is in july yeah Black Friday? Um, no, the um, what the next Amazon sale? It's on. It's in July. Anyway, d- carry on. Oh, this is just a side issue. <laughs> oh, I, ju- I just happened. Right to, I happened to see this week an article about the exact dates that the 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 whatever it is that Amazon are calling it the next Black Friday, not Black Friday, is going to be in July. What do they call it? Right. Okay. Flash sale? No. Uh, can't remember what they call it now. Prime Day. Prime Day. Yeah, that's it. Prime Day. Anyway, back to your story, sorry. Uh, They do two of those a year now, don't they? At least. (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll start doing one every week. No, it's it's just, uh, I I don't, I I, I don't have uh, much hope that these will last uh, 16 years at all. And and if you get anywhere close to that and it fails before the 16 years, I think you, you don't really have a leg to stand on to be able to go back to Samsung and say this didn't work. Exactly. What a load of clap Mm. from. Absolutely. Lenovo. Glass laptop. Yeah, this, what? this is an interesting one. The, the Lenovo, Lenovo, one of their new laptops, which we actually covered, I think, in, in last week or the week before, this new range of laptops. And I don't think either of us picked up the fact that one of them has got a glass lid. <laughs> Gr- oh, right, okay. And so there's been all this kind of um, stuff out there this week um, on various um, tech websites about whether or not you would want a laptop with a glass lid because sexy and sleek and lovely as it might look and it won't bend like most laptop screens just bend slightly um it's just really really vulnerable and i think it just passed everyone by that this was possibly it probably isn't but i'll I'll say it anyway possibly the first laptop out there with you know made of glass basically i don't they can't make the bottom bit of it glass but they can make the top bit (laughs) Would you, you wow. think that was a bit risky to carry around with you? 100%. You know, people are a bit nervy about bringing their phones out because when they drop it, they crack the screen, yeah. let alone the entire laptop. You know, the chances are a plastic-built laptop is still going to still going to last if you were to drop it 
uh, depending on whether it has a spinning hard drive or not. Uh, but this, oh, no way. No way. No how. And it'll be really slippy, or <laughs> slippy as well. Well, to be fair, I mean, most of the time it'll be carried in a bag or something, wouldn't it? Or a, a rucksack or, a, or whatever. So, yeah, all right, you could say it'll be slippery, but it'd be really classy, wouldn't it? Imagine just looking at it and, 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 and fondling it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, um, uh, fingerprints as well is one thing yeah, that yeah. springs to mind. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah nah, no, I think I'll steer clear of that. But it's an interesting catch there that it's glass. Hmm, okay. Yes. Maybe some people might have. I don't know why. Anyway, um, from one extreme to the other, Acer are doing a new tablet. I know, wow, isn't that incredible? <laughs> Acer making tablets. Um, the Enduro Urban T3, what's quite a name, but uh, it's a rugged, tough 10.1-inch slim tablet that features such wonderful technologies as a octa-core 2 gigahertz MediaTek processor with 4 gigabytes of RAM, hmm. 64 gigabytes of EMC, EEM, uh, of, of storage, um, and it has a dual brand Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5, a 5 megapixel front and, and rear camera, stereo speakers and a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, 8 hours of battery life. Now, this isn't quite targeted at the likes of a building site or anything. This is more for home, as uh, uh, there's even a depiction of a lady and a girl out in the middle of a vegetable patch um, talking about plants, I hope. They're looking at a plant and studying it. If it's not, it could be talking about anything actually. If it's not designed for building sites, why has it got military eight ten H standard? Um, actually, the the IP fifty three is not particularly good, is it? It's not very particularly high. Um, no, but it's enough for a child, and there's a child pictured, and ch- children are careless. Oh yeah, fair enough. It does look like a so beast. It's the, it, it, well, it's certainly not a beast under the hood, but mm. uh, yeah, you could throw yeah, it at someone yeah. and probably hurt them yeah yeah the, 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 are they challenging the Nokia T20 here um, and actually I, I'm not sure that if, if that's true I'm not sure they're doing it as well actually um, 4 gigabytes of RAM there's um, yeah my my one has got 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes and it's got a um, I'd have to check the specs but I, I think the, the battery is about the same and um, but it oh here how's your Wi-Fi Unrelated, but how's your Wi-Fi on your Nokia? On my what? Robust. Your your Wi-Fi does it does it frequently forget your Wi-Fi network? No, never. No. Uh, you mean the T20 uh, tablet? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Whenever I use it, um, which is not that frequently to be honest, but whenever I pick it up, it works absolutely solidly. I never have a problem with it. What well, yours is okay. going wonky, is it? Well, um, the odd time my son has come to me and said, uh, Dad has forgotten the Wi-Fi password again. And uh, it happened about three times on Friday night, which was kind of annoying. He's fiddling and, with uh, it. Just tell him to stop fiddling with it. It will drop off. <laughs> I, I, actually, I think it's something to do with um, uh, Google's family link thing uh, uh, whenever right. it gets unlocked. Because you can't unlock it if the Wi-Fi is not working. Uh, but it doesn't re-engage the Wi-Fi to unlock itself. Your your house is so complicated. Uh, no, it's nothing to do with the house. The house is fine. It's bricks and mortar. <laughs> it's got an average room layout. You, know, you can't get lost, particularly. <laughs> but but uh, no, the, I, I had thought it was the Wi-Fi network, but it, it all seems to be working quite fine. I reset it, and uh, it still managed to forget. So I thought it was maybe the Nokia, no. our Google link being... I think it's I think it's having a family and being up with tech stuff is that if you've got kids in the house particularly and you've got to put all these layers of stuff in to um, think about lots of I'm so used to being on my own and only having to think about number one that you you, you realise then where f- numbers of people use um, shared resources like in your house it, how much more complicated it is that was all, that's all I was saying really. Well, it's just, I think things had been rock solid for so long, uh, it's only quite recently, and I think it may have been one of the firmware updates, or perhaps it's been an update to Google uh, Family Link thing, that uh, that has caused this this little rupture, right. rupture in the stability. No, mine's rock solid. Um, it's absolutely fine. It had the April update, actually, um, just recently, mm. yeah. 
Yes, I, I did that with my sons as well, right. and I figured that that had maybe caused more grief. Hem, happened, I have given what happened on Friday. Okay. But never mind, no. I shall worry less about it on the show and focus more on the Sony WH-1000XM5 headphones that Ted is going to get very excited about because they're coming next week. I wish I could afford a pair. But actually, I'm not sure that I do because I'm not. If these are a, a true photograph of this and not some artist rendering, which I think the, the the word is that they are, I'm not quite sure that I like the design over the ones I've got. Mm. I like the I think of the XM4 design and the XM3 design is nicer. They they've kind of tried to modernise it a bit and change it, and um, I don't know. I mean. I, it, it, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, of course, and some people will say, oh, yeah, that's much nicer, but I think probably not. Um, and also, there was another story out this week. They said that the um, over the XM4s, the um, battery life is going to be increased from 30 to 40 hours. That is, as long as you don't have n- um, noise cancelling switched on. Um, but then there was another story that actually said they're not sure about that anymore, and they think that the battery life is going to be the, just the same as the XM4s. So all of this looks like it's probably coming down to unless there's something i missed in the story um about whether you like the design or not and if you've got like 300 and something quid to spend well yeah but at the same time it is nice to have a bit of a redesign so that you know you're getting the latest model and you don't feel like you're just getting the same thing that they've had before the xm3 and the xm4 you unless you see it written below it you couldn't tell them apart and uh we we do need a bit of a refresh and i think Two generations is okay to last on one particular design. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. You're obviously one of the people that would like it, and I, I think that the band that goes around the top of the head is thinner as well. I don't. I, I like the the the, fat, the fatness of that. Um, there's a slight redesign on the the pads themselves as well. Um, I, I I don't know. It's 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 kind of subtle in a way, but in it, I think it's the band that goes around the top that makes the big difference, and I just prefer the one I've got. Thank you very much, Sony. Well, uh, don't don't get me wrong. They look a lot crapper than the X3 <laughs> and the X4. <laughs> I do prefer the X3 and X4, and I would probably buy those instead. Yeah. Maybe that's not what Sony wants to and hear. The, and and they're going to be cheaper, of course, as time goes on. Well, one thing that's certainly going to be cheaper is the new Samsung Heart Watch 5, which is a a lighter version of the Watch 5. There's been quite a lot of rumours about the Watch 5 over the last few days uh, as to what to expect. And uh, this is a a smaller version, the Heart S. um, is the smallest version. That'll be the 40mm or 42mm version, and given the model number, SMR90X. There is also the Heart L, which is the larger version um, for larger wrists, which is the 44 millimeter or 46 millimeter. So in, in total, there's going to be four so far. There is also the <laughs> Heart Pro, which is yet another one, and uh, that, uh, that 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 that'll be five. It doesn't say whether or not there's two or three different versions of that. Six. Uh, we have to seven. click through to. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, the, the Watch 5 Pro. Um, so I, I now I'm getting confused. Now I'm I'm rereading this. Actually, are we getting the the heart instead yeah, that, of the Watch that's, that's 5? That's as I understood it. Was that the, the the question over this is that they're not going to call it the five anymore. They're they're rebranding it, and they're just going to call it Heart instead of five. And there's no indication of whether the galaxy name is being dropped or kept or it's all speculation but <sighs> you scoffed at me last week yeah, for suggesting yeah. the galaxy name might I be did, scrapped i did i did and this is suggesting well it's not suggesting the galaxy name be scrapped it's just not in there so <laughs> hmm, okay yeah. <laughs> all right well then it looks like there's going to be a bunch of different flavors um which i suppose is good but at the same time it's called the heart, which is a bit... Yeah, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Wanky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not call it lung? <laughs> lung, yes, or cardiovascular. We could have gone yeah. with that. <laughs> anyway, we shall see. You can report back when you get yours. Uh, no, I don't know. I think I'll go with the Tech Watch instead. They look fun. Are you going to get a Pixel right. 7 Pro? This is the big question. No, I'm not. I bought a Pixel 6 Pro, and I'll keep that for a while um, and and let this whole Pixel 7 Pro 
kick off for a while oh, so and uh, maybe get a Pixel 8. Um, unless along. they have Face ID on it, then you might. But it, it's one of those cases where uh, we've we've been leaked the idea of the Pixel 7 Pro through the cases that are being made because uh, obviously there's there's renditions of it that are sent out so that there can be cases available for people to buy. And uh, one of uh, the the cases has been leaked as to what to expect, and that includes the the back camera array, which has an interesting kind of lowercase i design uh, when it comes to the cameras and a flash and a microphone or a sensor type thing on the side and to be entirely honest the, the case itself looks awful i don't like that at all i wouldn't have that around mine <laughs> but uh, ted what did you make of it yeah again it's all speculation really but there seems to be when these case manufacturers get the data out there and they start leaking stuff out it looks like the writing's on the wall and it looks like the pixel 7 range is going to be pretty much physically the same as the pixel 6 range and i hated that whole great big lump of camera thing on the back i i think it's ugly and it gets in the way and it's tedious and horrible and get rid of it a pixel 8 we want to go back to the only i think the only question is whether they're going to put face id on it and i don't think they are i think that they're talking about using face id and the solly thingy in other devices and what have you but not in phones yet and and maybe you know what who knows what they're going to do with the pixel watch and whether that's going to be announced in google io this month this month it's in three days isn't it wasn't it the 11th it's the 8th today, 8, 9, 10, yeah. 11. Is it Wednesday? Tuesday. Anyway, um, so we'll see what's going to happen and what gets announced and what doesn't. But uh, no, but I, let, I'm waiting to move on with the design. A bit like the Sony headphones. I don't like this this generation coming. I'll just wait for the next one. Nah, uh, you're, you're wrong. The Pixel 6 Pro is one of the most gorgeous devices ever created <laughs> and uh, long may it continue uh, the one thing i'm surprised about is is showing some of the renders here is that they still have the tapered edges and i thought that you know that's the one thing on the pixel 6 pro that a lot of people have have uh, scolded it for for google doing that and having the regular pixel 6 with uh, with a flat screen um the 7 may be going for the tapered edges as well which i i think is going to just um be a bad idea <laughs> no, and the short of it uh, the flat screen probably would have been most appre- more appreciated by it depends how subtle it everyone is. I, think. I think it depends how subtle it is i was looking at the oppo find x3 pro in my hand yesterday and that's got a really really subtle slight curve on the edge of the screen and i think that helps mm-hmm. you when you're using gesture controls I think that's better than trying to just go straight from the edge of the case, the TPU, onto the screen. If it's got that slight curve, it, I think it helps with gestures. But yeah, each to their own. Yeah, each to their own. And uh, yeah, Pixel is a gorgeous device. <laughs> and we're all in agreement here. Well, we shall move on. Uh, Lenovo has announced the Yugo, Yuga All in One Seven. Uh, which is a, a desktop system that has a 27-inch 4K display, and it runs on Ryzen, the 6000H uh, processor, and it has a Radeon RX 6600M DGPU inside of it. It is an all-sing and all-dancing all-in-one that looks really cool. Ah, I, I, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the screen actually turns 90 degrees as well, so you can have it in portrait and, or landscape, depending on what you fancy uh, it's got either 16 or 32 gigabytes of ddr5 ram uh, wi-fi 6 and uh, it, it it's gray i love this i would want one of these a lot <laughs> yeah. until, until you read that out just now i didn't twig at all that aio stood for all in one <laughs> Wow. I just thought I just thought that was part of some sort of branding that Yoga uh, that Lenovo were doing. <laughs> All right. What, okay. what, what, uh, the reason I kind of picked up on this myself was that it just looks like when you turn it around, particularly, it just looks it looks like a monitor bolted onto a computer. When you compare this with, say, the iMac um, of years gone by, where everything is inside the screen. And I don't know if you can turn an iMac screen around or not, but, okay, with this one you can turn it around into portrait. Um, but surely the point of an all-in-one is that when you turn it around into portrait, all the gubbins and stuff 
or inside the back of a screen. But no, they've gone a different way with this. They've effectively made an upright computer on the back. They bolted a screen onto the front with a pivot, a pivot on it, and then you. So, uh, but to me, that's not an all-in-one. If it's an all-in-one, it needs to all be inside the screen. No, Lenovo, yoga off. Look at it this way: the computer is built into the screen stand. Exactly. That's not an all-in-one. No. It no. is. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I think this is a, a wonderful idea, and uh, more power to them. Uh, keep the all-in-ones cranking out. I know they are a bit of a nightmare whenever it comes to upgrading. However, if you go on to uh, YouTube and do all-in-one upgrade, you'll you'll actually find that quite a lot of all-in-one devices don't have things soldered onto the motherboard and things and you can do stuff but i think there's a there's a particular dell or is in the hp hp that uh you can actually upgrade the whole processor unit um to to a different one which which was really surprising whenever they took it apart uh, they realized wow <laughs> we can do this uh so they it, it just it made it a wee bit more not future proof but at least uh it, it entered it into a new generation uh it's worth saying that around the back uh, on the back of what is the stand in this offensive design that Ted has problems with, uh, there's a USB Type-C, a couple of USBs, a DVI out as well, so you can put in a second screen. Uh, the Ethernet's on there, and then there's something else on the left. Oh, that must be a proprietary power cable as well. Tap, it's a tap, weird tap. one. It looks a bit like a, a rectangular thing, a bit like a USB, but with something in the middle. I haven't quite seen that before. Hmm. I'll have a look. Bizarre. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's really only three USBs, one of which is super speed. That's a Kensington lock, isn't it? No, well, it's not. No, it's got, a, it's got a picture of a plug above That's it. That's a USB-C. No, it's not. The USB-C is uh, at the other oh, end. Oh, you're on the left, are you? Yeah, beside the display port, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a wee plug a, with two pins. Power. I know, that's what I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. I you couldn't work it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's a weird USB style okay. power connector that isn't a USB. No, you're quite right. <sighs> it's not USB C. Naughty Lenovo. Yeah, it's something else. Who knows? Might be quite good. All right, uh, down to uh, 9 to 5 Google, who have covered the idea that Google is previewing a new password killing pass key thing. They've got Microsoft and apple on board with something and uh, it's going to work with android and chrome uh, because they're declaring war on the password which isn't such a bad thing but god they need to be careful um yeah uh ted what, what can you tell us well, about this i was hoping that you could tell us about it because i when i was reading the story in the week i was just getting really lost and confused about why this is different particularly to what i do now because i've got two-factor authentication switched on and when i go to something new um that all works and google send me a code to get in and blah 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 but this seems to be saying that um in the future uh, your android phone will store a pass key that's used to unlock an online account in google chrome instead of entering a password to sign into a website or app okay so this potentially this could be uh, every single time you go to a website no i think it's the first time you go to a website on a device um when you um instead of entering a password to sign into a website or app you just unlock your mobile device pass keys are synced to the cloud um google account and transferred when you get a new phone or if it's ever lost so what i think it's saying is that instead of going to a website and in chrome and the first time you visit visit it you get asked for whether you want google to save your password and you say yes or no to that if you say yes then future visits are automatically you're in um they're going to change that to be not inside chrome but actually linked to your phone and they're going to send your password key to your phone for you to then say yes like you do if you're setting up a new pixel phone for example and you get a, a splash up on your device that says is this you signing in i've noticed that amazon have started doing that as well recently 
um, setting up a new device, mm -hmm. you get a, a splash screen. Was this you? And I think that this is a, an extension of that, as I understand it. But I, I'm not sure that I'm un understanding it properly, to be honest. Um, and uh, um, we don't want to be hassled with loads and loads of sign-ins like that all the time. But I think it's first visit for each device, hopefully. Well, yeah, but I suppose they could do it for uh, every time you make a, a purchase or something like that through, say, PayPal was to adopt it. And, you know, I, I think of this because I'm obviously I was hacked quite recently and I've, I've gone into detail about that in the past. And it is now a bit of a pain in the ass to make a payment because I have to do a password and have something sent to my email address. Then I have to use an authenticator as well to prove that I am me yeah. and sometimes have to tap on pictures of bloody traffic lights yeah, yeah. Um, and just to make a, a quick purchase or something like that or, or an eBay thing yeah, yeah. that I've bought. And you know, there needs to be some easier way around that. And depending on how how things are set up, you know, um, I, I have my own .com and that, that feeds into my Gmail and the way Gmail pages my, uh, my account is it downloads my email every 15 minutes as opposed to in real time because I, I, I haven't worked out how to do that, to be honest. So I have to wait 15 minutes for an email to arrive in my Gmail to be able to carry on with the code that's been sent to me. <sighs> unless I have another way in or a particular client that can page my email uh, on my request. So, you know, the, the, it, it, it is just, it's another wild west we're getting into yeah. where things are becoming unbelievably convoluted and we can't expect uh, the elderly to be able to deal with these sorts of things. You know, if I was to say to my mother, oh, no, you need to confirm your password address, you need to put in this authenticator code, that would be it. She'd have the internet turned off and she'd be walking down to the shop to buy whatever it is she needs um, at a higher price. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be bothered with this sort of thing, or at least she isn't. So we need to have a very simple way to do this. And I don't think having everything going through your thumbprint on your phone or confirming things on your phone is the easiest way to do it. We've all been there where we've gone to put in the credit card details and we've realized that the wallet or the credit card is in the car or, or, or way down in, in another room or something. And uh, you have to go and get it, which is a real pain. Um, having it on your phone or, you know, if, if your phone's not beside you, you may have to go and get your thumbprint on your phone, which you've left beside your bed charging because you don't have the appropriate wattage charger in your office and you need <laughs> juice immediately yeah. um so you, you end up having to go and get something to make something easy I don't, yeah mm -hmm. we, need, we need something else well, maybe we should just start yeah we could start executing hackers and if you're yeah. caught hacking, you could get executed and really scare hackers in not hacking anymore. And then we could just not have any passwords at all. And we could all just trust each other and run hand in hand through fields of daisies. <laughs> yeah, that would work. I could see that working. Good idea. Put that, put that forward to Professor Putin. <laughs> Professor Putin. <laughs> all right, okay. I, I don't know. I've got well. mixed feelings about security versus convenience versus. I mean, because because I'm I'm you know same as you. I I've had to to go and find my wallet in the middle of doing something. Oh, what a pain that is! But actually, the pain that it might feel at the time. You, it's nice to feel that someone's looking out for your security and you're not getting your money nicked. And you, perhaps we should be embracing that and saying that no that that um that in that my you, having said that the um people don't carry their wallets anymore do they i i do but people are just taking their phones to shops now and so they might not have their wallet and their card with them anyway to look at the number or whatever it is very tricky yeah very true it, it, it also helps you test how much you want something yes if you leave your wallet in another room because oh, i can't be bothered so don't worry about it. No. Uh, lenovo can keep their all in one <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, the last thing we have in the hardware section, because we're an hour and a half into this bloody Whoops. thing, uh, is um, that uh, yeah, if you've got a mechanical keyboard, Ted, which you've finally gotten rid of after well a day. Actually, don't don't tell um, me, but I didn't. I didn't send it back in the end. I've still got it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Did you get the refund? Then? No, I didn't. I I I, I oh. thought about sending it back, and then I started playing with it again. I thought, actually, I I do like this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it is going to be a bit worrying because hackers could be listening to what you're typing and they can work out using some sort of app uh, what you're typing on a mechanical keyboard because of the sound each key makes. It's not the sound, is it? It's the, it's the pattern of um, of presses, knowing English language. and Because it's not like a phone thingy where each phone button has got a different noise coming out of it. It's, it, it must be oh. picking up on the, just the pattern of presses and the the, the, the frequency and the just just the pattern. It's very smart, though, isn't it? Very clever hacking, this is. Mm, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I don't think too many hackers are going to go to that level, but I suppose if you have a microphone in your house, they might try and hack it. I guess there's a lot of hard work to be done behind the time in order to do that, and if it turns out that you don't have a mechanical keyboard, then, dang, that was for nothing. <laughs> Use another method. Yeah, yeah, but this obviously doesn't uh, uh, go for um, membrane keys and things no. like that. So uh, it, it'll it'll quite so, <laughs> it'll only be some <laughs> gamers. Yeah, so like WSAD, gamers. Oh, did, in fact, didn't this? Um, oh no, it came from Gizmodo. I was going to say, didn't that article come from a gaming website? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Well. We'll see going forward if this becomes a big thing or if if, uh, if you're vulnerable if you've got a mechanical keyboard. But right now, I'd say don't worry about it. Don't be chucking it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, flap your trap about an app. We've got Jam.gg, which is a new couch-based co-op retro gaming play um, <laughs> thing that uh, you can play with people online uh, old classic games I had a quick play at this this morning to see exactly what it was I didn't actually join a game because it asked to uh, to turn on my camera and microphone um, in order to join the game which made me a bit kind of uh, jumpy because I was in my jimmy jammies and my hair was a mess and I'd only just woken up <laughs> so I thought oh, right okay I'll not play Metal Slug Two or Metal Slug X, whatever game it is they happen to have. But they have a bunch of different titles that you can play, and you can join up with a bunch of friends or strangers and have a go at playing these old classic arcade games uh, through their platform. It actually seems like quite a decent idea. Um, I, I do quite like it. There's a mobile version of it as well, which allows you to use touchscreen controls, so you can go online and play classic gaming with with well maybe friends but uh randomers online mm. what do you think ted there's only nine games well there's nine games to join there's there there isn't a huge selection right. at the, at this point in time but there's enough to to get you in there and if you like neo geo and stuff like that then you'll you'll do well with this okay and is is it um, costing or is it advertising based or there must be some advertising if they didn't ask me for any money. Right. Um, but it's, uh, already, uh, no, I, it's I already going. It is. You can jump in right now right. and play okay. something. Two million users worldwide. It's a um, online cloud emulator. Which mm -hmm. just oh, it just received a bit. This is why it's in the news. It's it news that it received a big um, new re redesign. And a new yeah. brand name, so I don't know what it's called before. Probably Crap Games Limited. <laughs> I thought you'd love these games. They're I simple don't know any games. Of them. I know Pong. Well, I, I, of the seven, no, of the nine ones that are coming soon, I know Pong. Oh, Earthworm Jim, I've heard of, but I don't think I've played it. I, again, this is going back to what I was saying before about gaming, and you know all these games because you were in there and you played them, and I. I I just don't know them, and they're meaningless to me. So I've got to go in and learn them from scratch, which is why I want the play date. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have a play date with someone on this. Okay. They don't have to be with Fair you. Enough. It's got a, a, a top racer, overcooked metal slug series, uh, blazing chrome, Zeno crisis, samurai showdown, earthworm gym two, uh, arson bomber, micro mages. 
Street Racer. So there is kind of a mix from Super Nintendo games up to more modern indie uh, arcade games that that are that we're seeing. If if you have an Evercade and you have the various different collections, you're going to know an awful right. lot of these games because that's where they come Indeed. from, and they're getting good support uh, that way. So yeah. Looks quite good. I'll have a play with it a wee bit more and maybe even play a game after I brush my oh, hair. Good, okay. uh, the Amazon Kindle is going to support EPUBs. Oh, there's an update to this. Because apparently, oh. um, even though that's true, late 22, they're going to be allowing people to um, put EPUB um, files onto their Kindles. They're going to convert them to AKZ or something files which means they're not really in their native format and if there's any um, 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 limitations on the file it won't be able to read it anyway it's all a bit of a, a hit and miss really but, um, when, the, when the story first came out earlier I thought oh yeah people have been wanting to use EPUB um, files for so long and, and Kindles never have allowed them this is good news but actually maybe it's not as good as we first thought it was that was it okay all right well moving on with our um exceptionally well researched uh topics and well put together to note uh because we're going back to online emulators um or well not online emulators there's a new skyline app uh, that allows you to emulate the Nintendo Switch efficiently uh, because it's it's got quite a complicated uh, button array. Uh, it's made it quite difficult to bring to other screens. I'd say no more so than the Nintendo DS with its touchscreen and stuff like that. But um, they have uh, they, they're they're working their way onto various different uh, mobile devices and being able to play your Nintendo Switch on I've the got go. A Nintendo Ted, Switch. Would are you going to bin it got, now and then be able to play? Is that is that what this is saying? Is if you if you install Skyline on your Android device, you no longer need a Nintendo Switch, which I just paid out money for a while back, <laughs> and you can just do it on your tablet and your phone anyway and get access to all the same. Or is it not as simple as that? Have you still got to kind of hack them on and and sideload them and, and mess about doing some GitHub source coding or something? <laughs> GitHub, yeah, um, yeah. You have to you have to use uh, GitHub, and uh, you have to have a, a Qualcomm Snapdragon eight Gen one in there, which I believe you can crank open any phone and just throw one in. Um, they uh, they have on screen controls as opposed to your physical buttons that you yeah. have either side of the screen. Um, but essentially, what you could do is because the the Nintendo Switch is somewhat Android based, you could put this on a Nintendo Switch and then run the oh, emulator yeah. that way and emulate the system mad, that you're currently it? playing on. <laughs> Emulating would, yeah. the Switch on the Switch. <laughs> 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 only, a, only a buffoon would do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's possible. I'm sure someone in the, on the, the, the team's Discord has, has had a go with that to see if they can get it on there. But, uh, yeah, I, th- I think this mainly just sort of allows you to get around the whole high price of gaming and be able to find them from nefarious sources right. online not that anyone would ever do that or encourage anyone to ever do that but uh, yeah it's it, it allows them to do Nintendo Switch emulation on a device and their their test bed is a OnePlus 10 Pro uh, and they're getting between 40 and 60 frames per second on Celeste which isn't the most demanding platformer in the world but uh, yeah, that, that just shows that it, it runs okay. It's nice that um, things are becoming broadly available, though, and the things are not locked in all the time, so that's good. Yeah, that that yeah. is good. Good, it's good. It's illegal, but it's yeah. good. Good for <laughs> and I'm sure Nintendo will be all yeah, over yeah. them. They'll be fighting fire all the way to the back. Indeed. Right, uh, Twitter is testing. Oh, I like this one actually. Twitter is testing a way to share out. Uh, tweets to a small group of people. Um, they're, they're, the, the article on Android Police goes into, oh, it reminds me of Google Flashbacks, and it's essentially the same Google as Plus. Instagram Close Friends. Google Plus. I, yeah. yeah, that that thing, yeah. Uh, but what you can do is you can um, have a tweet and then share it with uh, followers and non-followers alike, and you can pick up to 150 people. Is Why amazing. is it limited to 150? In that group. That's mad. That's not a small group, then, if it's a thousand well, it's people, not, That's is it? not like Google Plus at all. Google Plus didn't have um, limits on size of circles and groups. You could have as many as you want. Anyway, do carry on. 
Okay, but may- maybe the, the people who are inside that group receive a particular notification. So if they have anything larger than that, then there's this the chance that people could start getting spammed and stuff How like that. How is this different to um, Telegram or Signal or one of those other services? That's exactly how they work, isn't it? It, it could be, yes, but that, they're not owned by Twitter, so Twitter has to do something in uh, order to be able to bring that technology uh, into Twitter. Uh, emu- more uh, they, they don't say, <laughs> if you want to do this, go and do that on Telegram. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Twitter's just trying to, um, you know, to, they're trying to musk things up. Musk things up. That, yes, yes. Uh, that's a bit of an elongated joke there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, Chrome Journeys. Ooh, I like this. Um, uh, have, you, have you played with d- this? Do you? <laughs> if you go, if <laughs> I don't know. It could be a bit scary. If you go to your Chrome, which most people probably will be looking at right now, going by the worldwide statistics, and then you go to your three dots top right, and then go to history, and then click on history, and then at the top there, which I hadn't realised at all, you can either have a list there's a list tab or there's a journeys tab if you can't see that then it's not been rolled out to you yet but i can see it and it and then yeah. you you what you get underneath it instead of a, just a a flat list of um all the stuff you've kind of looked at in kind of i'm not sure what the order is in the list um but it's oh it is in date it's in, it is in time order so the journey for the uh, the journey section it compartmentalizes it up <laughs> and shows you where you've meandered what, what you've opened where and where you've gone and 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 how you've meandered around and so if you want to track back to something you can work it back logically based on where you've been and, and how many times you've hit the back button and all that sort of thing i quite like it i think it's quite nice and i've not had to rely on it yet but i can see the idea and i think it's quite a, a nice idea can you see it I can, yeah. It it does have a, a a good idea. I just, you know, where you, uh, yeah, where you meander off topic when you're looking for something in particular, and you end up getting waylaid. You can see at what point yeah. you got waylaid. Yeah, exactly, and that's yeah, slightly different. It's a novel idea. It's slightly different to a flat kind of you know chronology of where you've been, and I like it. But if you can't see it, there's also a switch on the left hand side, dear listener, which. May, you may need to just throw the switch to turn it on, but um, it's in there in the in the in the settings at the moment. Um, but it might be not rolled out to everyone. So yeah, and it does uh, other devices as well. Essentially, it's a bit like um, whenever they what, when you look at Google Maps, you can see where you've yeah, been. Yeah, exactly. And then re- and the points. And then realise you've yeah. not been anywhere, and you lead a sad life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the pandemic has been hard on those people. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Chrome Journeys. I like it. Yeah, I like that too, actually. I might start using it a wee bit more. Or I'll just forget about it as soon as I've closed it. What are we talking about again? <laughs> right. Uh, TCL have ruled out an update to Google TV before any of the Google TV devices have actually received it. And it includes the April Security Patch 2 so TCL seem to be on top of their game at the moment, uh, dumping out a whole load of Google TV stuff and then keeping them bang up to date. Uh, Ted, are you a bit annoyed about this? Do you think you would be upset that uh, having a Google Chromecast or, a, or a, a Google supporting device, you're not getting Google TV's updates as fast as TCL customers? If I used them, I probably would be, yeah. Because you've got to... I don't use Google TV at all because I'm, I'm still using my Roku and I think the Roku's a better deal. But um, I have got a Google TV dongle thingy here and it sits there uh, gathering dust. Uh, pl- plenty mm. of dust, I might add. Um, TCL, though, like Samsung and all the rest of them, are you know, it, it all relies on hardware. A bit like the Amazon um, TV that just recently came out, which everyone's now ignoring. Um but TCL have been really good with their <laughs> over the years with their TVs, haven't they? And if they've um, rolled something, it's a bit like um, Samsung phones getting the um, security updates each month before Pixel devices do. And you think to yourself, "Oh, that's a bit of a con. I've got a Pixel. I should get it first. <laughs> um, but actually, yeah. they don't. So yeah, but that's good for TCL users, surely. 
And as you, you, you talked about the Amazon TV, I just suddenly remembered about that Sky TV. Remember they did the Sky TVs? The Oh, yeah. It was Gla- about six months ago they what announced was the glass? those. Was that the glass? Was it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sky Glass, after the discontinued that, did anyone buy one? Yeah, someone did, and they reviewed it, and they said it was crap. Right. Someone, someone in yeah, our group, someone it. in our group, you know, in our MeWe group, and yeah, right. they they got one, they tried it out, declared that it was crap, and sent it back. Hmm. Well, that 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 sounds like a <laughs> yeah typical Sky Horror. Was that the Amazon? Uh, I can't remember that. I'm getting confused because Amazon did one as well, <laughs> didn't they? I don't know. Yeah, just a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, the Google Chromecast for TV thing as well. That that dongle that you referred to earlier as well. It's just gone from bad to worse, hasn't it? Um, I, I use it every now and again, but I try to avoid using it because it's just a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's always, I suppose it's my fault maybe because I just don't use it often enough. But whenever you turn it on, it's got to update and things are, I think the apps are too large for the storage that's on there. So now that the apps have got to a certain size, things are you know having to be jostled about and losing performance. The controller doesn't work properly. It quits out of things that you're watching halfway through watching it back to the screen for no reason. Um, so yeah, no, uh, Google hardware could possibly do with these updates. A little quicker. Has, got a, uh, has it got a Plex app on it? The what? Can sorry? you put Plex on it? You yeah. can. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that sounds rubbish. And I since I've got my Roku system set up, particularly with the the stream bar thingy. I've never looked back. Even my Sony TV speaker doesn't get a look in because it's that stream bar is so good, and the Roku just does everything I need it to do. Yeah, yeah. that stream bar was uh, was one of the best things ever re- mm-hmm. released. I have to say. All right, uh, what's new in Chrome? Um, oh wait, did I put well Chrome? It, I know I put one. We're, we're meandering a bit from Chrome OS into Chrome territory here, but that's fine. Um, one of the things that I noticed this week was that Chrome um, there's a Chrome screenshot editor coming, which is pretty useful. This week, um, I was aware that I'd taken a screenshot of my Windows computer to make a point in the MeWe group to some people. Um, and I was able to edit it and draw on it and everything inside the Snip and What's It tool, and it worked really well. But I was reflecting that even though you can take a screenshot um, on a Chromebook, you can't, um, or in or, or in Chrome, you really can't do um, editing of it. And this new thing coming is an editor, which means you'll be able to do the same, which is great. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're really. Um, it's, it's funny how Google and Android never had screenshotting for so yeah. long, but now they, they've uh, they've gone and you know realised how important it is. To Absolutely. People. And the other one you put in about um, Google Tasks, which which I have to admit, Google fanatic as I am, I don't use Tasks. I, t- I tend to put everything in Calendar. So, was there a reason for you this pricking your ears up? Uh, yes, because uh, you can now do uh, recurring dates on Google Tasks. So if you have something that you want to come out once a month or once a day or once a week uh, and don't want to have to reset it all the time, um, a bit like you would probably do in Calendar, um, it, uh, you can have a task there that sits in your taskbar or it sits in the, the task function on uh, Google Docs and in Google Mail um, to, to remind you to do something um, at a, at a point, and once you tick it to set it to go away, it'll remind you again uh, at the the next point whenever you've set it up to recur. This is what I, do, this is what is, I don't get, because I, I don't understand why you would do that in tasks when you could just do it in calendar. Surely it's just as, as simple, isn't it? Well, I, I always thought that Google never really embraced the whole task thing because they had both keep which had sort of task elements to it. And then they had their calendar, which had task elements. So tasks felt unnecessary, Mm. but it just, it wasn't dedicated. And I was never happy putting things into keep because it was never as functional as having a dedicated, you know, like Microsoft to do or something like that uh, uh, application. And then calendar cluttered up your calendar with 
un- unnecessary things, and they would show up on oh, okay. on uh, displays and stuff like that as a as a function that's happening at two o'clock this afternoon. You've got to go to the dentist, but you also have to take the cat out of the oven. You know <laughs> those sorts of things. Whereas Google Tasks, um, you, you can you can have it separate and just remember okay. it. To, uh, rec- the recurring things is a, is a nice thing. So uh, if you need to, if you don't want to set up a direct debit, you could set up a a task to remember to make a uh, a payment on your your ground rates every uh, okay. four weeks or something like that, or the calendar month. Yeah, but you see, uh, you see, so I don't want that in my calendar. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, bad example. Yeah, I, <laughs> Dust the top of your <laughs> shelf. You don't want that in your calendar, uh, but you would have it in your task okay. thing. Yeah, fair, that's a fair point. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't come out on the day and be forgotten about. The task will just sit there until you've ticked okay. it. And then next, first of the month, it'll tell you to dust the top of your cabinet <laughs> again. Fair enough, okay. So yes, we we meandered a bit away from Chrome OS, I'm afraid, this week. But um, it's it's all good Chrome stuff. Yeah, but once someone's embracing the Chromebook, they they find these applications, which are part of the whole thing. So I think it does yes. fit factor we will in make quite it well. Fit. Yeah, I like tasks. I want to use it okay. more. I want to be able to put more into my task list. But it annoys me that there's things sitting there needing done. I shall, I shall do the same. I'm, on the right-hand side of my screen there, I can see it sitting there. If I click on it, it opens up the um, side thingy and... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, you're right. It's really easy to access, and and it's across all the the whole Google's Google's ecosphere. So I should give it a go. I will try. <laughs> yeah, see what okay. happens. And if if it doesn't work, then it's no big issue. No. Right. Uh, so in Harkback, um, I I was thinking about this the other day. Whenever it came to an old car that I was looking at. Um, and I had a look in through the window, and I noticed that it had no car stereo. What? Uh, they, they, they'd taken the stereo out for whatever reason. Oh, it'd been nicked. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it'd been nicked or not. But maybe the person who owned the car had just decided to replace the stereo, or didn't have an appropriate stereo to put in the hole. Um, because it, it's a hole of a very significant and uh, representative size of car stereos. Right. Uh, you, you can have. A single, which is the most popular, but you can also get double DIN head units. I think it's called D-I-N units. Um, and uh, uh, certain cars would allow for the double ones, or you could modify your dashboard to allow the double ones and then put a screen in. But these seem to be forgotten about these days because most cars come with some sort of infotainment system built into them. So you don't have the luxury of being able to go out and buy yourself a new car stereo and stick it in. And there was, you know, it, it, you would have it stolen out of your car. I have had three stolen in my whole life. Um, and and they, they just, they go missing. They were targeted by, by car thieves to go in and nick them if you had them. So if you bought an expensive one, you had to get beefy security to look after it. But uh, I, I was thinking about them and how over the years... They didn't actually change. They were always kind of the one size or the two sizes if you had the double. Um, and the the first car I had, the Volkswagen Golf Mark II GL, 1985, polar silver, beautiful car. Um, I it got broken into twice while no broken into once while I had it, and the original stereo, which my brother had actually replaced to a Goodman stereo, uh, got pinched, and then I replaced that with a Pioneer, which then got pinched after that um the the there was a tape player i remember because it was my mum's car and she had a tape player and whenever it passed to my brother he put in this goodman stereo um and and removed the tape player and put in a cd player which i thought was class and had a removable front which came with a little box that you put the front in and take the box with you whenever you left the car and you couldn't use the stereo without the front so if someone nicked it, they would need to go and either get a replaced front or it would just be an off-putting uh, thing for someone to go and break into. It was a whole thing to remember to do whenever you got out of your car. And if you went in somewhere and sat down or maybe went to the cinema and then suddenly remember that you forgot to remove the faceplate of your car stereo, 
would it still be there when you got out of the cinema and you'd start to sweat and worry and cry and things like that or you had to get up during the film and go out and check and get it and bring it back in or whatever um and then, uh, yeah, it stayed like that for many, many years. Uh, I, I, they, you probably still can buy car stereos now, um, and there are certain cars that I imagine would have uh, replaceable stereos, but it's not as easy to do now. And I, I had a look at my head unit in my uh, my car, and I just thought that I can't do anything with that. I can't pull it out and stick a new one in if I want a slightly better uh, speaker or car, uh, car stereo you can go and change the speakers and things like that and you can install independent third party ones that are designed entirely for your car but they're a great deal more expensive than the shop that sold car stereos and you'd go in and be able to see ones that are like 50 quid then you could go all the way up to thousands of pounds and gradually work your way down and it was always fun to go through and click the buttons and some of them would have little graphic equalizers and things like that and uh, some of them might have oh an sd card slot or something or or bluetooth built into them as well which is a big unique thing that came along um and yeah uh, they 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 changed uh, as they went along but they always kept it in that one uh, particular sized unit and it's rare that you see something last for so long and be so uh, universally uh, acknowledged as the, the specific size for a car stereo. Ted, did you have car stereos and did you change them yourself and yeah. did you upgrade them and yeah. lose them? Yeah, yeah. When I was when I was younger and I was mucking about with you know secondhand rubbish cars that I could afford to to have, this was one of the great playthings really. You know, working out how to get a better stereo and sometimes I can remember one car I had, it didn't even have a slot, so I had to I bought a car stereo, put the wires all in and it just sat on the shelf <laughs> <laughs> so that the bare bones of it wired it all into the where it's supposed to go and out to the speakers, one each side of the front. Um and, and it's all just it's all visible. But yeah, you're right. It is. It's quite interesting that they've been for for such a long time. They're that one size, and wherever you bought a car stereo from, pretty much you could almost be guaranteed it would just slot into the the, the cage that was inside the hole, and it would just it would just work, and it would just be the right size. Um, and you're right. There's not many things that have remained so universal for so long. Um, and yeah, uh, the the the, fr- the front plate. I remember that coming out. The USB A was a big one um yeah I, I seem to remember before mm. micro usb and all that yeah. so you could plug in a a, 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 um, a a pen drive or something with your music on um and all that stuff and it, it was yeah it was great it was good fun and it's interesting i've not been into halfords for years but in halfords you just used to have banks and banks and banks of these things all set into a, the wall of the display and I wonder mm-hmm. if you went in. The, I mean, maybe you've been in recently. I, what you see there now? Do they do they sell header units like infotainment glass thingies instead? I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. I, I do remember that the, it used to be fun. You go in and there would be the self closing ones as well. That the, the the face panel would flip 180 oh, degrees. Yeah. You could you could press all the buttons and they would all flip and you would go. Oh, that's the fastest <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. 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 They were good. I, I had great fun with car stereos. And then when I started to be able to afford better cars, um, or more up-to-date cars, of course, they all became very much built-in systems, which were a bit less kind of uh, changeable. And actually, they became so good that you didn't want to change. I remember I had a Volvo Estate once, um, and the, the sound system was just stunning. And that was straight straight mm. out of the factory. And, and you know, you, you really didn't need to, to change it or do anything with it, unless it broke, of course. But, yeah, back in the days of the Larder and the Simca and the DAF 66, you, you, you're kind of on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I said I'd, I'd lost a couple. I'm, I'm, I lost one in Belfast, my, my, that golf that I had. It got broken into on Cameron Street, which is... It's not the worst area of Belfast, like, but it's 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 kind of out there. It's it's in not the nice area of Belfast now, uh, but it was a better of area of Belfast back in the late nineties when that was. And then I got broken into down in Dublin as well. I always remember being a wee bit more thankful of the person who broke into my car in Dublin because they they pulled the lock, opened the door, went in, stole everything, and then closed the door again uh, and went away. Right. 
whereas the person in Belfast just smashed the window and and lifted it out. So I only had to get the lock replaced. And I was like, well, thank you. I suppose he could have smashed the glass. But then everyone would have known he broke, was broken into a car. Yeah. Um, and I would have had to drive all the way from Dublin back up to Belfast with a bit of a breeze going on in the car because I had no window and clean out all the glass. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, the second experience was slightly better, but <laughs> still equally annoying. I never got one. And the Garda Sorry. weren't particularly helpful either. I was going to say, I never, got, I never had a car stereo nicked, but probably because they were so crap that nobody thought to do it. The only thing I ever had nicked from a car, really, was my car phone. I think I mentioned it before, my actual built-into-the-car right. car phone, um, which was a Nokia, one of the earlier Nokia... Um, things that were just, you know, plumbed into the car. But um, apart from that... And it got nicked. Yeah, it got... Were they not quite complicated to remove? Yeah, but you could just rip the thing out, essentially, two screws, hold the bracket into the into the thing, just pull it away and it'll come away. It's not... It wasn't factory-fitted. It was a, a post, you know... It was done afterwards. So you just rip it away from the... The 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 um the dashboard and it, well not the dashboard but the the stuff underneath the dashboard and it just comes away from the screws and anyway they 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 did oh, nick it yeah. and that was the only time and they smashed the window to get in as well I was really annoyed because I love my I yeah. love my car phone I felt like a million dollars with that I think I mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's one we'll have to come back to, actually. Car phones, yeah. I'm just conjuring up some imagery of some of the car phones I've had experience of in the past. I don't think I've ever owned one. Right. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was trying to cool. pitch that, probably 1994 or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were the, the man about town if you had a phone in your yeah, car yeah. in the 90s. And a lovely aerial on the back, and it was all the thing. And it was a lo- my lovely <laughs> automatic um, VW Jetta. I loved that car. Anyway. The Jetta. <laughs> the golf with the boot. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> cool, cool. All right. Well, moving into bargain basement because, oh, grief, that's two hours. <laughs> it's a long one. Mm. Sorry, folks. Okay. So, in the bargain basement this week, we're going to start off with that company I mentioned earlier. Do you want to have a go at pronouncing Kyoxia. this? Or, or okay, it could we'll be go with Kyoxia, that. Because Xiaomi is C I A. So, it could be Kyoxia. Kyoxia. Okay, that sounds kind of catchy, actually. Um, they used to be Toshiba, but uh, Kiyosia now has taken over the, the brand of Exertia um, SSDs because there's an SSD for sale, which is dirt cheap. Um, it's 480 gigabytes. It's 2.5-inch SSD, and it's only 34 quid, which is crazy money. I think about how much these were over the years, how many I've lusted after for so long. Uh, but yeah, SSD prices do seem to be continue to tumble. Uh, Thirty quid for half a gig ain't bad. Very good. It's an odd amount of gigabytes, isn't it? Four eighty. That that tends to be standard for five twelve. When you expect two fifty six and five twelve, this is two forty four eighty. I think this is what they used to do, wasn't it? Well, four eighty. I've seen four eighty a lot. I think I have a four eighty. In do fact. You? Okay. Yeah, I do, yeah. I thought it was all like 512 at that place. Anyway, they, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still not being offered any um, phase payments. Pah. No, I'm not on that either. Okay. Right, Samsung Galaxy S21 FE 5G, 256 gigabytes, with, uh, mind you, I've not checked this today. Is it still there? £100 off, now 618. Um, so this is the 256 gigabyte version. And the mm. S21 FE um, was s- slightly smaller than the S20 FE, and I like that. Um, and I wanted to get one of these phones for a while, but 618 is still too much for me. But anyway, um, yeah, £100 off. Is it still there, the offer? It is, yeah, but I'm getting 12 monthly payments of £59.86. bastard. <laughs> I'm not. It's, it's really odd, isn't it? I'm not. I've got. Strange, yeah, yeah, no offers of that at all. The only thing they're offering it to me on is Kindles. Really odd. Right. Okay. Amazon owned products then. So maybe it's not a regional thing after all. But uh, yeah, my, my wife is still using the, uh, the lavender version of this. And it's a cracker of a phone. I, she's really, really pleased mm. with it. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive. I don't think it's a, a that's a huge amount to pay for, and you get really good quality stuff with it. Her, the 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 shots she takes on the camera 
are are worth the price alone. Yeah, and and also, um, if you want to, you you can get you can I think you can still get this um, cashback trade in thingy if you buy it direct from Samsung. Um, I think we spoke about it before. They were offering for my S10. They were offering me two hundred quid, um, and that brought the new price down to five fifty. So that would be cheaper if you had something to trade in. All right. And also included in the deal here is, uh, oh wait, hang on. So there's the, they apply the hundred pound voucher, uh, hundred pounds off, and then you can claim three months Disney All Plus. Right. So that that figure that I gave you of the twelve months is for the seven one eight. So it's down from seven hundred and fifty pounds to seven one eight. Yeah, but twenty nine. A, a one hundred pound clip, isn't there? There yeah. is, yeah, but the. It'll be less again for the fifty nine eighty six over the twelve months. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. So you can take off under quid that way. That yeah, way. yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, very nice. So next up is uh, Logitech. Logitech K seven eighty. This is a multi device wireless keyboard, uh, which Ted kind of fancies. I've got obviously. two of them. Um, <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I know I've got one of them because I, I, when I got my new Logitech keyboard, I sold one of these to um, John Satherley, and um, he's very pleased with it. But yeah, so I, but I've still got one of these. Why did you have to? Because I've got. I told you before. I live in like two places, and I just have to have setups uh, <laughs> various places. I I might be. This is really nice though. The, wow. the seven eight. You're a man who lives in excess. <laughs> the 780 is really nice, though, because of that back... The, the, the one that we bought, the recent one, the, the LX Keys, whatever it's called, MX Keys, um, it yeah. hasn't got that slot, and I really miss that slot. That's really, really good for putting your um, your phones in while you're, you know, while you're working or whatever. You, um, so anyway, sorry, I, I hijacked your, put your, your item... <laughs> Well, well, why don't you buy another one? They've reduced the price from seventy-five pounds down to forty-one pounds. Because I've got an MX keys. Can. Well, this way you can set it on top of this <laughs> and uh, and use the oh, slot. Yeah, good idea. As you are a man who lives in excess. <laughs> yes, I do. I do tend to have two of everything because I've got um, you know two at my mum's house. I've got a, a desk there set up for what I do there, and obviously I'm down here most of the time. But I don't want to keep lugging stuff back and forward. Which brings us back to the whole thing about the <laughs> pocket PC that we spoke about earlier. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, all right. Yeah. Okay, uh, so next up. Oh, is this me? Uh, this is one oh, of Oh, yeah, your this chance. little mouse. This looks really nice. Um, you probably won't like it because it won't be fancy enough for you. But this is the Logitech G305 <laughs> gaming mouse. And it's... Um, uh, you, to get this price you've got to get the um the black one but it's 24 quid on amazon Ooh. i put the wrong link in there um i linked through to the article and not to the item we'll fix that later but yeah 24 quid logitech g305 light speed wireless gaming mouse really like the look of that it looks very much like the um the Amazon ones that I have been used for years, but it's got an um, extra button on the top, and also the scroll wheel looks really, really much better. And I quite fancy one of those. I wish I needed a mouse now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might need one, but some, depending on where you happen to be, you should have three or four of them. I have. Um, <laughs> knocking about, two in each pocket. Um, it comes in blue, lilac, seafoam green, and white. Ted will have the, probably have the complete collection this time yeah, next the, week. The, 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 um, the price is only on the black one. That's the trouble. I fancy the, I fancy ah. the blue one, but that was more money. Um, apparently, the proper price is fifty one ninety nine. Ha, ha, ha. Um, and they're various prices. The lilac is twenty seven forty nine, but that the cheapest one is the black twenty three ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, in my journey of searching for a new exciting uh, screen display type thing, I did happen upon um, the Acer Nitro. I'm not going to read out the bottom the model number because it's far too stupidly long. This is a 49 inch ultra wide double full HD Good curved great. monitor gaming. Even that bit was far too long. Um, this is a VA panel. It's not IPS. So uh, it, it does have FreeSync Premium Pro built into it. I don't know what the difference between FreeSync 
FreeSync Premium and FreeSync Premium Pro is, but, you know, if they want to stick more words in there, go right ahead. It's 144 hertz, uh, 4 millisecond response time, HDR 400, quantum dot, DP, HDMI, and it's black. And it's LED. Uh, so it's that's, that's an OLED, isn't it? Yeah, I don't you see, know. that proved my, that oh, yeah, proved yeah, my yeah. point from earlier. You didn't even consider that. But actually, that, to me, no. that's a, a big plus point. It's an OLED screen. Lovely. Okay. Well, you can get it because it's reduced in price from £819 down to £598.99. It's like a letterbox, isn't it? It's like a huge letterbox. It is, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like you could stick a car stereo in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's it's a it's a four K screen, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I just I can't get past the VA side of things. I want an IPS, and it looks gorgeous, and it would uh, it dominate any desk you put this on. And it's got a big thick set stand that you can't build a computer. And I've got into. my Nitro Five laptop here. I should hook it up with that HDMI out. Oh yes, why not? Nitro why not? on a Nitro. Very nice. <laughs> Good yes. call. All right. Uh, next. Uh, oh, it's me again. I must have put. No, that's you. Sorry, I have one of these as well. Oh, this is my yeah. Western Digital sixteen terabyte um, elements uh, um, external drive, which I bought. I can't remember when. About a year ago or eighteen months ago. I can't remember. But anyway, I paid two sixty nine for it, and this is the. Um, the price at the moment is two forty four quid. The, the sixteen terabyte is really good. I, it, it, oodles of oodles of space going forward. It's a little bit noisy sometimes. You need to be a, aware of that. Mm. It kind of clicks and clacks in the background, um, particularly annoying if you're podcasting. So I have tended to turn it off when I'm not when I'm podcasting. Um, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a good price at two forty four. I think it's probably the cheapest I've seen it. Um, so, but you've got another one, another. Uh, even bigger drive haven't you i do yes I'm, i have the 14 terabyte version of this um which i leave on at all times and i haven't noticed it right. clicking and clocking al- along but uh, on that 16 terabyte i'm getting five monthly payments of 49 pounds wow. which makes it really quite attractive actually yeah, it does to sit in b- beside my 14 terabyte too but uh, yeah, the, uh, I think Western Digital must be doing something at the moment because I also happen to clock the the twenty eight <laughs> terabyte MyBook <laughs> Duo desktop. Uh, this is a RAID device uh, that has a, a USB three point one external hard drive and an auto backup software built into it, like like you would use that. Um, it's uh, it was seven hundred and sixty five pounds, but it's down to five hundred and nineteen pounds and ninety nine p. There is also the option of five monthly payments of £104 on it, which is well attempting there. Now, that's that's a lot of storage there. I could have that filled uh, quite quickly, I suppose. That's terrible. (laughs) Uh, 28 terabytes. Wow. But you would would run it in RAID, so you'd really only have 14 terabytes with a a, a backup, I'd say. But that's a huge amount of storage. My my sixteen terabyte is just straight sixteen terabytes, and I've only so far filled up five terabytes on it. So there's oh, l- right. loads of room to go. <laughs> oh, my fourteen terabytes! I'm constantly looking to get rid of stuff on it so that I can put more stuff on because I'm running out. Very good. Um, the last one was a simple nightlight come kind of bedside clock which i noticed was 40 percent off and looks quite cute i was quite tempted to buy one myself um mm. it was 50 quid to start with it's now 30 quid and it just looks really interesting apparently um, according to the reviews the the speaker um is very powerful more powerful than you think it should be it does rely on mains power but it's also got a usb c and a usb out a out on it you can put um, external 3.5 millimeter auxiliary um, into the back of it. It's got a clock and a display on the front. It's got lights. It's got sleeping, um, uh, you know, um, um, calming sounds. Blah blah blah. All the usual claptrap. But it's just, you know, for a simple bedside clock, I thought that looked really nice. And as it was 40% off, I thought I'd mention it. 30 quid. 
Oh no, hang on a yeah. minute. There's also a five pound clip on it as well, which makes it twenty four ninety nine. Uh, are you going to get it then? I'm, I'm really tempted. I, I'm not sure if I should spend be spending twenty four ninety nine on a bedside clock, to be honest. But I really do fancy it. And this time five years ago, I would have had three because I've got three beds <laughs> for the three beds. <laughs> right? Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't have Google Assistant no, built no, into it. No, it's not. It's, it, it's simple. It's not a fancy thing and that's what i was saying at the yeah. outset really this is uh, almost a simple bedside clock it is a it's a bluetooth speaker as well so you you know you can send whatever you want to it through bluetooth um but i was quite turned on by the fact that it was um oh there's another color there what price is that it was a white one 187 pound 39 right someone's taking the piss there aren't they yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, it, but I, I like the idea that it's got the USB A, USB C, yeah. and uh, and a, a, an aux in yeah, as well. Yeah. That, it looks mm. quite good. And mm. and yeah, the, the, what I was going to say was that people have said that the sound is really very good, um, disproportionately you know good bass and loud. And someone they put some decibels on it, which was um, uh, what was it? I, I saw it earlier. It was quite a big decibel thingy. Anyway. Um, yes, I might be tempted with that. But the only trouble is that I think the offer runs out today. So the, the, the £5 off clip, I mean, that runs out today. So you, if you don't... Oh, you need to make your mind up. If you don't do it today, dear listener, by midnight, then clearly you'll have to pay 30 quid instead of 25 Right. Well, we'll try and get it up as early as possible. Well, this is a long podcast as well, though. They'll, they'll have finished it just after midnight. Yes. Whoops. Sorry if you've decided, oh, would like to buy that. Uh, Ted will refund the fiver if you do. <laughs> right. Brilliant. There you okay. Go. Bargain basement. Hi, Grant. All right. Well, we'll we'll. I, I've got grass to cut, so I'm going to just end this now so take care uh, if you want to get in touch with us you can by contacting us at gareth at techaddicts.uk or you can find me on uh, twitter at gareth miles g-a-r-e-t-h-m-y-l-e-s and i have my gareth miles.com as well that i'm updating a wee bit more frequently than i used to ted where can they find they can find you? me at ted salmon.com s-a-l-m-o-n and um, everything I do is points from there. So podcasts and MeWe groups and all the rest of it. Do come and join us in the MeWe group if you're listening to this and don't know what that's about. Then go to tedsalmon.com and you'll find out. And if you want to buy me a coffee, then it's at paypal.me forward slash tedsalmon. Always welcome and grateful for any pennies I can get to keep things going this end. Cheers. Good call. All right. Take care and we'll speak to you all next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.